has already told you, which is basically f of t is a continuous term signal. So we are going to do the, with the help of uh, the delta of t, as an impulse strain, we are going to sample f of t, means f of t into impulse strain, we are going to get 25. Then finally, we are going to get, in the, in the digital, in the, in the discrete term, we are going to get the signal, see, which is f of t is equal to f of NTS. The t is nothing but NTS, means any, any integers. It can be goes from minus m to plus m t. So n is going to lie from plus m to minus m t. It is only integers. Means plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, 0, like that. So therefore, only at a t is only at these instants, it is going to sample the f of t. And we are going to get the digital format of that signal we are going to get. And the, this kit and domain signal that, that we are going to get. So now the next thing is, so always perform the sampling below the upper limit of the TS. So always perform the sampling below the upper limit of TS. And then you get perfectly original signal from the reconsidered signal. So let's figure out upper limit of TS. So always perform the sampling below the upper limit of the TS. And then you get the perfect and you get back the perfectly original signal from the reconsidered signal. So let's figure out upper limit of TS. So basically in this point they are saying that basically we have to always perform the sampling below the upper limit of TS. And then we get back the perfectly the original signal from the reconsidered signal. So let us figure out the upper limit of TS. Same thing I already told you. So always you have to do the sampling which is less than or equal to TS. Then only we can get back the original signal from the reconstructed signal. But if you go above this TS, then the reconstructed signal is not at all equal to the original signal. So that so this is called as a upper limit TS. So this T upper limit TS we are going to figure out. So always you have to do the sampling below the upper limit only in order to get back the original signal from the reconstructed signal. So what is this upper limit TS that we are going to figure out? So so always perform the sampling below the upper limit of the TS. And then you get perfectly the original signal from the reconstructed signal. So let's figure out the upper limit of TS. So therefore we can say that Always you have to perform the sampling below the upper limit of the TS and then you can get back by, and then you get back the perfectly the original signal from the reconstructed signal. So let's try to figure out the upper limit of TS. I already told you always you have to do the sampling below this upper limit of TS in order to get back the original signal from the reconstructed signal. But if you go above this upper limit of TS, then the reconstructed signal is not all equal to the original signal. That is the reason we are going to figure out this upper limit TS. Sampling interval we are going to figure out. So listen carefully. Suppose this is the impulse strain. So this is the impulse strain. It is having an area of 2 pi by TS. So 2 pi by TS. So this is basically a magnet or omega S. You can take it anything. So therefore we can say that the impulse, see this is in the frequency domain. So this is in the frequency domain. I have already told you what is the impulse strain. Impulse strain I have already told you right. What is impulse strain? Sigma k is equal to minus m to 2 to plus infinity delta of delta of t minus k t is the impulse strain. Suppose if we do the Fourier transform, what we are going to get omega naught into sigma k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity delta of omega minus k omega naught. What is omega naught? Omega naught is equal to 2 pi by Ts. Omega, omega is equal to 2 by Ts. I have already told you, right? So, if you do the uh, Fourier transform, so if you apply the Fourier transform for this, so this is nothing but the periodic signal. So, I have already told you how to figure out the Fourier transform for a periodic signal. This one I have already, already told you, right? So, for a periodic signal, if you apply the Fourier transform, we are going to get in this format. Omega not into sigma k is equal to minus to plus into delta of omega minus k omega naught where omega naught is equal to 2 by b yes. So I in the I am going to do the analysis in the frequency domain only I am going to do the analysis. So here uh, the inverse frame is, is present at 0 k is equal to 0 k is equal to 1 k is equal to 2 k is equal to 3 like all that from minus of 2 plus from the k is always an integers. So it is having a peak of omega naught is 2 pi by ts. So same thing I have drawn right. So same thing I have drawn. So let me show you here is having a output of 2 pi by ts means that is a only area we can say 2 pi by ts in the frequency domain. So the frequency domain they are going to get like this at 0, 1t, 1 omega naught, 2 omega naught, 
so we have plus two volt and goes on. So this is the frequency domain. Suppose let me take a from f of t. So f of t let me take some signal, some signal. So let me take some signal f of t. Some signal f of t I am going to take here. And I am going to the free for a process of the signal. So I am going to get f of omega. So f of omega, I have drawn some picture like this. Some picture like this I have drawn. It is having a angle p to i, which is like a triangle waveform. The frequency domain and the uh, maximum frequency possessed by the signal is omega n. So this is minus of the omega again plus omega n. So you can see this is a some signal of the having the maximum signal frequency which is omega m. So now what I will do, I will do the multiplication of these two signals. The time given I will do the multiplication of these two signals. And what I am going to get f of p. So f of p into f of p into sigma k is equal to minus p to plus infinity delta of p minus p means if i multiply these two signals then what i am going to get then what i am going to get very simple which is nothing but it is equal to sigma k is equal to minus p to to plus infinity f of f of n p s n p s and you can see k is in the k is f of k is into 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 I'm writing a filter of P minus P degrees. So this is the overall picture that we are going to get here. So this is the overall picture that we are going to get. So the time given, if you multiply the signal to the signal, so here P is nothing but NPA, KDS, we are taking KRI, so we have to take a KDS. So this is the overall signal that we are going to get. So this is the overall signal that we are going to get here. So this point always you have to keep in your mind. So like this we are going to get. Suppose you try to do the Fourier transform of this one, what you are going to get. So I have already told you, see what is a Fourier transform? What is a Fourier transform? See f of t into sigma k is equal to minus m2 plus infinity delta of t minus k t s. What is a Fourier transform? You know basically whenever multiplication in time domain leads to revolution and frequency domain, which is 1 by 2 pi, 1 by 2 pi which is uh, f of omega convolution of the this one so this one uh, the, the you know what is the four class of this one you know is nothing but which is nothing but it's not if you don't remember that sigma k is equal to minus equal to to plus equal to delta of omega minus k omega no right so here omega you know two by by ts so two by two by cancels finally you are going to get one by ts so one by ts will come outside and the ts will come outside so in some to be f of omega convolution of the sigma k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity delta of omega minus k omega not we are going to get so if you further simplify what you are going to get one by ts so if you further simplify what you are going to get k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity f of omega minus k omega that we are going to get here. So this is the overall thing that we are going to get. So this is the overall thing that we are going to get. So this is the overall thing. Same thing. So this is the overall waveform I am going to draw. Just shift the signal. Whatever the waveform omega is there, just you have to do the frequency shifting. With respect to omega naught, 2 omega naught, 3 omega naught, signal minus omega naught, minus 2 omega naught, minus 3 omega naught. So whatever the signal, just you have to shift it. Just you have to shift it. And to omega naught, 2 omega naught, 3 omega naught, Plus omega naught, plus two omega naught, and goes on. So I have shifted the signal at omega naught, two omega naught, plus omega naught, minus two omega naught, and goes on. At, so at this also, at zero, because k is equal to zero is also possible, right? k is equal to zero is also there. Then it will become f of omega. So what is the peak here? 1 by 3s will be there. So that, that, that is the reason I have taken here 1 by 3s as a peak. So these points always you have to keep in your mind. So the product in the time given leads to uh, 1 by 2 point times a. Convolution in the frequency domain. So this point I have already told you, right? So we have to number 2 by 2s. 2 by 2 by cancels, 1 by 2s are going to come outside. So this is a, a simple equation that we are going to get finally. So what I will do now, whatever this signal I am going to get, this signal I am going to pass to the low pass filter, to the low pass filter, NPF, low pass filter, ideal low pass filter. So we will pass the signal to the low pass filter. So this is the, this low pass filter has the cutoff frequency omega C and minus omega C. So this low pass filter will have the cutoff frequency omega C and minus omega C as you can see clearly here. So this 
sure. I will choose the lowest filter in this fashion. This time you put off with pencil from the same as you see. So with the help of this, only this signal is going to get passed and remaining all these things are not passed with the help of from the low pass filter. So this all are cut down. Only this signal is going to get passed finally. So what is the output that you are going to get? So this is the output that you are going to get. The output is nothing but this is the original signal. So this is the original signal. So, this, so that is the reason for we are going to basically we are going to uh, do the sampling and then we are going to pass through the uh, low pass filter and then we are going to get back the original signal. See one by T S there, one by T S is there, right? So you have to do some scaling by T S. If you do the scaling by T S, then we can get back the original signal. It is having a peak value of one. So what I am going to do is very simple. First, do the multiplication of F of T and input step, and then that signal pass through the low pass filter, and then do the by some scaling in order to get back the original signal F of T. So this is what I am trying to tell you. Then, as omega not increases. There will be overlapping. See, as you can see, as omega naught increases, as omega naught increases, then see as omega naught increases, then what is going to happen? As omega naught increases, there will be overlapping. There will be overlapping. There will be overlapping. So, sorry, as omega naught decreases, not increases. As you can see, as omega naught decreases, see as omega naught increases means the graphs will move far away. The graphs will mean see will move far away. Then there will be no overlapping, right? See, as omega naught increases, all these graphs are going to move away. Then there will be no overlapping. Suppose if omega naught decreases, then what is going to happen? Suppose if omega naught decreases, this will come towards this one, and finally there will be a possible of aliasing. This one is going to intersect with this one. So the so the so, so there will be only overlapping. And if you pass through low pass filter, what is the signal that you are going to get is no more. A, it is no more original signal. So therefore, as omega naught increases, there will be no overlapping. Whereas if omega naught decreases, yes, there is overlapping. So because of that, the order of the signal that you are going to get there is no more the original signal. So as omega naught decreases, there will be or oversampling or overlapping. We can say overlapping. Or we can say oversampling also we can say overlapping. So what is omega naught? You know, 2 pi by T S. So you, 1 by T S is nothing but F S. So 2 pi F S. This is nothing but 1 by 3s. I have already told you. See, no overlapping when. So, what? See, what is the condition for no overlapping? What is the condition for no overlapping? Means no overlapping. One, what then? At what condition? So, you can see this is nothing but omega m. So, this is omega naught. This will be omega naught plus omega m. This will be omega naught minus omega m. So, this frequency is nothing but omega naught plus omega m. And this is omega naught minus omega m. And this is omega m. And this is omega c. So, what is the condition for no overlapping, which is omega m should be less than omega naught minus omega m. See, when omega m is less than omega naught minus omega m, then there will be no overlapping. So, you can see clearly, when omega m is less than omega naught minus omega m, then there will be no overlapping. So, if omega m is less than omega naught minus omega m, there will be no overlapping. So, if you simplify, if you take the omega m to LHS, we are going to get 2 omega m is less than omega naught, or simply we can say omega naught is greater than 2 omega m. So, what is omega naught? Omega naught is nothing but you know 2 pi by fs, so 2 pi fs, and omega m is nothing but 2 pi fm. So, if you simplify, we are going to get fs is greater than 2 fm, where fs is the sampling frequency, where fm is the maximum message signal frequency. So, fs should be always greater than 2 times the message signal frequency message signal frequency suppose this touching when just touching so these two graphs are going to touch when when uh, omega naught minus omega m is equal to omega m so omega m is nothing but which is equal to omega naught minus omega m so if we simplify we are going to get omega naught is equal to omega m omega naught is nothing but 2 pi fs and omega m is nothing but 2 pi fm so if we simplify we are going to get fs is equal to 2 fm see overlapping when what is the condition for overlapping when Omega m is greater than omega naught minus omega m. Or we can say when omega naught minus omega m is less than omega m, there is a overlapping is going to be present. So overlapping when omega m is greater than omega naught minus omega m. So if we simplify, we are going to get omega naught is less than 2 omega m. Because if you simplify, if you take this omega m to this side, what we are going to get 2 omega m is greater than omega naught. Or simply omega naught is less than 2 omega m. Omega naught is nothing but 2 pi fs. 
and the magnetic is nothing but 2 pi fm so the sum of we are going to get f is less than 2 fm then what is the condition we can say and finally whenever the sampling frequency is greater than or equal to 2 times the message signal maximum frequency message signal maximum frequency there will be no aliasing no aliasing so let me write here let me write here so let me write here so let me write here so therefore we can say whenever the sampling frequency is greater than or equal to 2 times the message signal maximum frequency then we can say there will be no aliasing no aliasing means no overlapping no overlapping then we can get back the original signal from the repressible signal suppose if the fs is less than 2 times the message signal maximum frequency then we can say yes aliasing is present yes aliasing is present this overlapping is present so therefore low frequencies will become high frequencies and high frequencies will become low frequencies so therefore it, it, it cannot give the Therefore, we cannot get back the original signal from the reconstructed signal. So, let me, so this is always you have to keep in your mind. So, we know that uh, sampling frequency is greater than or equal to 2 times the basic signal frequency. Then only we can say, then only we can say there is no aliasing. So, therefore, whatever the reconstructed signal, we can get back the original signal from the reconstructed signal. Suppose the Sampling frequency is less than 2 times the message signal frequency and there will be alias so because of that high frequency will, will become low frequencies and low frequency will become high frequencies. So because of this, you can you can clear the back the signal from the reconstructed signal. So now let us see the analysis. This analysis I already have told you, but let me again some detail. So f of t for f of t, the continuous strength for a transform is f of omega. So for f of t, the continuous strength a uh, Fourier transform is f of omega. So this is a f of t signal. So this is a f of t signal. So this is a impulse strain. So this is a impulse strain. This is a impulse strain. What is the impulse strain? I already told you what is the impulse strain. I am going to give you a notation which is sigma k is equal to minus m to plus m d delta of t minus k ds. I already told you that. So this is a impulse strain. This I am going to write this delta p s of t. So this is a impulse strain. A small notation I am going to give. So now what I will do? I will multiply these two signals. I will multiply these two signals. If I multiply these two signals, then f of t will become f of nts. f of nts because only at ts instance only it is going to get sample and we are going to get like this. f of ts is nothing but f of ts of t is nothing but f of 0, f of ts, f of 2s, f of 3ds, f of minus 3s, f of minus 2ds, f of minus 3ds. So this is the discrete signal that we are going to get. So we can say for the delta ts of t so try to find the Fourier transform because it's a periodic signal right so if you try to find the Fourier transform we are going to get delta ts of omega so so what is the delta ts of omega i have already told you what is the Fourier transform of this one which is nothing but omega naught into sigma k is equal to minus into plus of delta of omega minus k omega naught and omega is equal to 2 by ts i have already told you right then if I multiply these two signals, then what is the f of t? f of t is of t, which is nothing but f of t into this one, which is nothing but here f of t will become f of kts because here k is the variable. I already told you, right? So, so f of t into delta t is of t, which is nothing but f of t goes inside, it will become sigma k is equal to minus m to plus m t, f of kts into delta of t minus kts. This one I already told you, right? So we know we are going to multiply f of t and this one. So it will become only sample, right? Only at KTS here you are going to get so f of KTS into this one. So this is a f of k f of p s of t. So for f of f t s of t, the discrete time Fourier transform we are going to get. So basically continuous time. So this is a discrete signal, right? So this is a discrete signal. That is the reason we are going to find discrete time Fourier transform. So this is also discrete time signal and this is also discrete time signal. That is the reason I have found this one. So basically, this is what that we are going to get. Then what is FTS of omega? So FTS of omega, I have already told you FTS of omega is nothing but the product in the time domain will become combination of the frequency domain. So F of omega into delta T S of omega with a factor of 1 by 2 pi. With a factor of 1 by 2 pi. So, 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 the, so that is the reason we can say that. So we can say finally we are going to get in this fashion. I have already told you right. 
So f of omega you are going to get like this. F of omega you are going to get like this. So is f of t right? So if you, for f of t, try to find the Fourier term. So we are going to get in this format like this. For example, omega m and minus omega m. Then I am going to do the sampling delta T s of omega. I have already told you that delta T s of omega. What is the delta T s of omega? I have already told you just omega into sigma k is equal to minus into plus to plus to plus into the delta of omega minus k omega naught. So this is basically the time domain. All this is in the time domain. This is not the equation domain. So omega is equal to two by two s. So p k will be will be equal to two by two s. The frequency of zero plus or minus omega plus or minus two omega naught and goes on. So uh, this one is always you have to keep in your mind. Here omega naught means here minus omega naught. Here two omega naught means here minus two omega naught. This one connection here. I have written wrong here. This is minus omega naught. Minus omega naught and minus two omega naught here. So this one is always you have to keep in your mind. So what I will do? This is in the time domain. So this is f of t. This is delta t of t. If you multiply this two to this, we are going to get in this version. The time domain. In the in the Fourier transform means. This is in f of omega. This is delta t s of omega. So now do the combination of these two signals and multiply by one by two pi. So we do the third time. Do the combination of these two signals and then multiply by one by two pi. Then what we are going to get? Simple. I have already told you. It is one by two s. You are going to get this. So I have already told you one by two s. So whatever this just shift to across this omega naught to omega naught to just stop it. Shift it. So if you shift this one, you are going to get like this. And then I am going to keep a low pass filter here. So the maximum SS signal frequency is omega m, then minus omega m. It will become omega naught means here omega naught plus omega m, then omega naught minus omega m. So this is a, for a low pass filter, this is the cutoff frequency omega c. I have already told you what is the conditions for overlapping, non overlapping, and no, I miss in no overlapping, overlapping, and just overlapping. I have already told you what are the conditions. So some important points to will say omega naught is nothing but 2 by 2 is. So omega naught is nothing but two over two s. Now omega naught is a frequency of the delta t s of t s for impulse signal, for impulse signal, for impulse strain signal. What is the frequency omega naught? Some books they use this as omega s also. We use it is a small notation, right? So omega s is nothing but omega naught is equal to two over two s. This is nothing but the sampling the frequency, the frequency of the impulse strain, impulse strain just delta t s of t. So then I already told you. No aliasing, no aliasing when, no aliasing when F S is given on equal to two times C F A. Or F S is what you You can write, or or you can write like this. Omega S, omega S is greater than equal to two times C omega M. So omega S or omega naught, you can use anything. If omega S or omega naught greater than equal to two times C omega M, there will be no aliasing. So therefore, we can get back the original signal from the original signal. But If omega is less than two times the omega m, or if s less than two times the f m, then the aliasing is going to be darker. So therefore, the high frequency will become low frequency, and low frequency will become high frequency, and then we cannot get back the, and then we cannot, then we cannot get k, then we cannot get back the original signal from the original signal. So you can either use omega s or omega m, omega s or omega m. What is the thing? Always you have to keep in mind. So these things always you have to keep in mind. So these things always you have to keep in mind. So therefore, these points always you have to keep in mind. So either you can use omega s or omega omega n. The omega s or omega n is nothing but the frequency of the impulse strain. It is the frequency of the impulse strain. The F M is the message signal frequency. Message signal frequency. So for no aliasing, I have already told you what is the condition for no aliasing. No aliasing when omega n omega n minus omega m is greater than Omega m, omega naught minus omega m is greater than omega m. So omega naught minus omega m is greater than omega m. So if you simplify, what you are going to get? I already told you, omega naught minus omega m is greater than is greater than or equal to greater than is greater than or equal to omega m. So if you simplify, what you are going to get? So same thing. Yeah, he said omega naught minus omega m greater than or equal to Omega m, then there will be no aliasing. So if you simplify, omega is greater than equal to two times omega m, and omega is nothing but omega s, which is two pi by two s, two pi by two s, and this is two. Two to cancels, we are going to get, we are going to get like this. Two s is nothing but less than equal to pi by omega m. This is a notation, right? It is just a notation. 
सो पी एस 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 बार रिपोर्ट कहे ओमेगा पी एम यू कैन राइट लाइक दिस और और यू कैन राइट इन अंडर पर्सन आल्सो ओमेगा डिस्क रिपोर्ट रिपोर्ट टू टाइम्स ओमेगा एम ओमेगा डॉट ओमेगा से सतबर टू पाई एफ एस एंड ओमेगा में सतबर टू पाई एफ एम टू बोल टू बी कैंसल्स सो एफ एस बिल्कुल भी पर टू टू टाइम्स ही एफ एम यू कैन राइट इट विद इट सो नाउ और और यू कैन राइट लाइक दिस सो नाउ यर टीएस टीएस मैक्स व्हाट इज टीएस मैक्स TS max is nothing but so TS is always less than or equal to pi by omega pm. So what is the maximum? This maximum is called as the mid-pitch time period or critical time period. So this TS max is called as the mid-pitch time period. So this is called as the mid-pitch time period is pi by omega pm. This is also called as the critical period. The critical time period also they will call it like this. Then if it's greater than or equal to two times omega m. So what is the minimum sampling frequency? The minimum sampling frequency is equal to two times the F M. This is called as the mid-pitch frequency or critical frequency. So F M is nothing but two times the F M. This is called as the mid-pitch frequency. And T N is nothing but one by the F M. T N is nothing but one by the F M. This is called as the mid-pitch interval. So listen carefully. So listen carefully. So so listen carefully. An important thing. So what is F S? F S is greater than or equal to two times the F M. And what I told you, so F S is greater than or equal to two times F M. F M, right? Then what is the mid-pitch frequency? Mid-pitch frequency is nothing but minimum sampling frequency for no aliasing. So this is for no aliasing, right? For no aliasing. So for no aliasing effect. So mid-pitch frequency means this is a frequency, this is a minimum sampling frequency of which there will be no aliasing. So what is the meaning of mid-pitch frequency? Mid-pitch frequency is nothing but it is a minimum. Is a minimum sampling frequency at which there will be no aliasing. So it is a minimum sampling frequency at which there will be no aliasing. So something like two times the F M, two times the F M. Then what is F M? F M is nothing but F M is equal to one by T N. You can say so T N also you can say. Then if so, F M is minimum, then T N will be maximum, right? So then T N is equal to the first time interval, and F M is equal to the Mid-pitch frequency. So F M is called as the mid-pitch frequency. Mid-pitch frequency. And T N is called as the mid-pitch time period. Mid-pitch interval. You can say mid-pitch interval also, or mid-pitch time period also. You can say mid-pitch interval. So therefore, you can say mid-pitch frequency is something that is a minimum sampling frequency at which there will be no aliasing. So minimum sampling frequency is something that depends on F M. So F M is equal to one by T N. And F M is called as the mid-pitch frequency. And the end is called as a mid-pitch interval. So if you know one thing, you can get that idea. That thing, right? So no need to uh, think more about this one. So the end is called as a total one by eight ten. The end is called as a mid-pitch interval or mid-pitch time period. And the end is called as a mid-pitch frequency. So then, is it possible? Omega m, omega m is something that maximum frequency contained in the FOP signal we found from the Fourier transform of the signal FOP. But omega m is something that For F M is something that is a maximum frequency component is going to present in the F of T signal, and that we are going to obtain with the help of the Fourier transform of the signal F of T. So what about this F of M is something that suppose the signal F of T is having lot of frequencies. Suppose F of T is having lot of frequencies. Out of that, we have to choose the highest frequency only. We have to choose. So this is a point I was going to keep in mind. Suppose the signal, suppose the signal F of T is having lot of frequencies. It is having lot of frequencies. Out of that, we have to choose the maximum sig signal frequency only. We have to choose. So, suppose the signal, suppose the signal, the wave is having lot of frequencies. Then, what you have to do? Out of that, we have to choose only the maximum frequency that we are going to obtain with the help of the Fourier transform. So, for the wave, we try to figure out the Fourier transform. From that, we can figure out the signal is and what is the maximum frequency it is going to present in the signal wave. So, we can also figure out. The delta for applying the Fourier transform for the signal F of T. So finally, I can say, what about this F M is nothing but it is a maximum frequency. What about this F M is nothing but maximum frequency that is going to present in the signal F of T. So in order to figure out the maximum frequency that is going to present in F of T, we have to apply the Fourier transform for the F of T. So if we apply the Fourier transform, we are going to get all the frequency components that are going to present in F of T and try to choose the maximum frequency that is present there in this formula. In this formula. And then F of S is nothing but one by T S. F S follows the sampling interval and this is 
sabe a frequência em dessas escolas que 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 essas escolas são sabem entre bem é que está tipo disso em número de samples são sample em one second só disso em número de samples são sample em one second só disso em número de samples são sample em one second só vi que é assim é que está tipo disso em número de samples são sample em one second as you can see clearly what's the meaning of your first this may number of samples are sampled in one second so you can see in the fps of t so, so in one second how many number of samples are sampled this that is fs f is going to indicate this may number of samples are sampled in one second for this fps of t so this may number of samples are present in one second in the fps of t so this point always you have to keep in your mind so therefore i already told you so therefore what we can write here and finally what we can do for sampling frequency we can write in other fashion also so sampling frequency is greater than or equal to liquid frequency for low aliasing for low aliasing we can write like this right so we can write like this right so we can write like this similarly suppose if the fs is less than fl fl then yes there will be aliasing yes there will be aliasing there will be aliasing similarly we can write Sampling time period also we can write. For sampling time period also we can write. What we can write? I already told you. I already told you that if you try to figure out the, with the help of Excel, you try to figure out the TN. So TN is the maximum time period, right? Here is the maximum. Suppose if T, the sampling, if the sampling at time period, the sampling time period is less than. Suppose if the sampling time period. So what I can say in place of FS, if I write. 1 by ts and in place of fn if i write 1 by tn then what i am going to get here if you simplify the tn is greater than or equal to ts you write or at ts is less than or equal to tn but this is for new areas you know so i have taken the first piece of it so therefore or you can write like this or what you can get here yes it is not equal to tn here what will it be here it will be an active so so ts greater than tn so you can write like this so this is the thing i can say because fs is nothing but 1 by ts and fn is nothing but 1 by tn so always always you can say what are the sampling sampling time period should be always less than or equal to nickish nickish time period then only there will be no aliasing the sampling time period is greater than nickish time period yes there will be aliasing you can call it anything you can call it You can write in terms of fs, or either you can write in terms of ts. Also, you can write. So you can see finally, whenever the sampling frequency is greater than equal to the fs frequency, there will be no aliasing. Or fs is equal to one by ts, and if fs is equal to one by tn, if you realize we are going to get ts is less than equal to tn, if this is a condition, then we can there will be no aliasing. If fs is less than fn, yes, there will be aliasing. If we simplify, we are going to get ts greater than tn. So. These are the different ways of writing. So finally, I can say for FS greater than or equal to times the measure signal frequency, there will be no aliasing. If FS less than two times of FN, yes, there will be aliasing. So minimum sampling frequency is close to the frequency. So FS is always greater than or equal to FN. FN. So there will be no aliasing. Or FS is equal to one by three S and FN is equal to one by three N. So the frequency is from here going to be yes, yes, or equal to three N. And if n less than f n is there, if it's less than f n is there, there will be aliasing. So you can read this. Then we are going to get t is greater than t. Also, you can write. Then, if someone asks you, if someone asks you, what is the minimum sampling frequency? Minimum sampling frequency is nothing but nickish frequency. So nickish frequency, right? So minimum sampling frequency means nickish frequency. Then, what is the maximum sampling time period? What is the maximum time period? Time period means it is a nickish time period. It is a nickish time period. As you can see clearly here, as you can see clearly, minimum sampling frequency is a nickish frequency, and the maximum sampling time period is a thing that nickish time period. Nickish time period. So you can see clearly here for no aliasing. So for no aliasing. For no aliasing. For no aliasing. So for no aliasing, so this is a point that we should be keeping in mind. Frequency is minimum is time period is maximum because if this is equal to one by ts, right? If frequency is minimum is time period will become maximum. That's it. So this point also we should be keeping in mind. So therefore, 
f is all square root equal to f and all right only sampling group is all square root equal to g is equal to the question frequency and this is always is not equal to n and all right only this is always is not equal to n and all right only and all right only so f1 is all f is all square root equal to f for no less than as well as this is always is not equal to n and all right only so this was always you have to keep in mind so finally we can see I will give it in conclusion. I will give you a summary. Summary I will do here. So I already told you. When Fs, Fs, the sampling frequency is greater than or equal to 2 times the precise signal frequency, then there will be no aliasing. There will be no aliasing. I will tell you. I will tell you. If sampling frequency is less than 2 times the precise signal frequency, thus there will be aliasing. So this was I already told you. Then, what is an equal frequency? Equal frequency is something that it is a minimum sampling frequency for no aliasing. It is a minimum sampling frequency for no aliasing. So, therefore, you can write like this. What is the equal minimum? Just two terms of f. So, therefore, you can write two in terms of equal frequency. You can write f is greater than or equal to f for no aliasing. For no aliasing. If suppose if you want aliasing means f is Plus then F n for S aliasing. If you want the aliasing, you have to go for this condition. So these points always you have to keep in mind. Right? Then you know what is F s? You know F s is something but F s is equal to one by T s, and F n is something but one by T n. So from this, what we can say? So if you read in this one, what we are going to get T s is not equal to T n, and T s greater than T n. So this is what I am going to give the conclusion. Same thing I have told you, right? So same thing I have told you. So, so this point always you have to keep in your mind. So therefore, the sampling frequency can be equal to 2000 meters signal frequency. There will be no aliasing. The sampling frequency is less than 2000 meters signal frequency. Yes, there will be aliasing. So, the reference is nothing but the equal frequency means the minimum sampling frequency for no aliasing is nothing but two times of FN. You can write like this in terms of equal frequency. F is equal to the F minus there will be no aliasing and F is equal to 1 by T S and F is equal to 1 by T N. If we read this one, we are going to get T N less than equal to T N. If F is less than F N, there will be S there will be aliasing. If we read this one, we are going to get T S greater than T N. And you know uh, these things. Suppose F S is minimum. This is F S is minimum is T S is maximum. T S is maximum. T S is maximum. F S minimum is nothing but F n and T s maximum is nothing but T n. So therefore, F n is equal to one by T n. So F s minimum is nothing but F n and T n T s maximum is nothing but T s maximum is nothing but T n. So therefore, these things always you have to keep in your mind. So that is the reason when the sampling frequency is greater than or equal to the crystal frequency, there will be no aliasing. The sampling frequency should be always less than or equal to the crystal time period. For that, there will be no aliasing. So these things always you have to keep in your mind here. So I am I am basically arranging this also. So I have only to know this case. This is less than equal to pi by omega n. Omega is nothing but two pi f n. So here pi pi cancels. So pi pi cancels. So pi pi cancels. One by two f n. Two f n is nothing but two pi f n. Two f n is nothing but two pi f n. So one by f n is nothing but two n. So one by f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but two n. So two f n is nothing but even though you don't have to, you don't, don't have to remember this one. Even though a plus f s by one by t s and a plus f n by one by t n, then if we remember this one, we are going to get in this fashion. So you don't have to think on these things, right? So these things always you have to keep in your mind here. The next thing is here. T c T c is called the critical sampling time interval or the equation interval. So T c is called as the equation sampling time interval or the so the critical sampling time interval or the equation interval, which is T C is nothing but T N. So F C is called the critical sampling frequency or the equation frequency, which is F C is equal to F N. Just a small, small notation, right? So T N is nothing but T C and F N is nothing but F C. So F N is called the equation frequency and F C is called the critical sampling frequency. Both are same. And T N is called the equation interval and T C is called the critical sampling critical sampling sampling time interval time interval. Both are same. So, F N is called as an equation frequency, and F C is called the critical sampling frequency. Both are same, and D N is called as the equation interval. R T C is called as the 
critical sampling time interval. Clean is for an efficient interval, and this is for critical sampling time interval. Both are the same. So these things always you have to keep in your mind. So Fc is nothing but Fn, Tc is nothing but Tn, small notation. So you know Ts is nothing but just now we have discussed Ts maximum value. So what is the Ts maximum value? Pi by omega m. So Ts is maximum means Fs will become minimum. This uh, Fs minimum is nothing but 2 pi Fn. So yeah, you know Ts maximum is nothing but equal to Ts maximum, Ts maximum is equal to pi by omega m. So Ts maximum is nothing but 2 pi by omega m. So Ts maximum is equal to pi by omega m. So let me solve here. So let me solve here. So you know Ts max is equal to pi by omega m. So omega m is equal to 2 pi fm. So 2 pi fm. So pi pi cancels we are going to get 1 by 2 fm. So therefore uh, 2 fm is equal to 1 by Ts max. So 1 by Ts max is nothing but Fs minimum. So Fs minimum is equal to 2 times of Fm. So same thing I have written here. So therefore pi max is already here. So time Ts max. So Ts max is equal to pi by omega m. And Fs minimum is equal to 2 by Fm. These are the critical sampling or edge of overlapping. So these are called the critical sampling or edge of overlapping. What is the meaning of edge of overlapping? They are just they are going to coincide. This full graphs they are going to just coincide. That is follow the critical sampling or the edge of overlapping. This just they are going to get overlap. This this they are going to get coincide. Then what is the meaning of under sampling or or over sampling happen? See under sampling or over sampling is also called under sampling or over sampling. What is when it is going to get happen? When the is less than F, we are two, two times of FM, I already told you. Whenever the FS is less than two times of FM, there is aliasing effect. This overlapping. Overlapping is going to get affected. So overlapping is going to get affected. Overlapping is also called as the under sampling. Under sampling. So you know, F is less than 2 FM means I've already told you. If you rearrange PS is PS is nothing but this time you discuss it, PS is greater than PN. PS is greater than PN. Or you can write in another fashion also. This TS is greater than pi by omega m. I already told you, you can write in the other fashion. So TS greater than pi by omega m or F is less than 2 fm. And with this we are going to get the overlapping condition of the under sampling. Then, then what is the no sampling? No sampling means F is greater than or equal to 2 times the fm. And TS less than or equal to pi by omega m for no overlapping or no overlapping or no aliasing. So let me write here that condition also, which is Fs greater than or equal to times Cfm or at Ts less than or equal to pi by omega m. This is the condition for no aliasing or no overlapping. The next thing is now pass the reconsidered signal through the low pass filter by proper cutoff frequency so that you can you can get back the original signal. See I've already told you now. First you have multiplied the signal f of p and delta ts of p and you have passed through low pass filter. So now we have to low pass through low pass filter and then we have to we are going to get the new signal and the signal if you do the scaling then we can get back the original signal. So now pass the reconsider signal through the low pass filter a proper cutoff frequency so that you can get back the original signal. So omega c is called as a cutoff frequency of the low pass filter. So this is a so this is the low pass filter or this low pass filter the cutoff frequency omega c so omega c should lie between omega m and omega to minus omega m so omega c should omega c should lie from omega m to omega to minus omega m omega c should lie from omega m to omega to minus omega m so this is a cutoff frequency of the low pass filter then we can get back the original signal from the recursive signal the recursive signal has the amplitude 1 by ts so you can see in the frequency domain, it has amplitude of 1 by Ts in the frequency domain. So by proper magnification, we can get back the original signal. So I've already told you. So if you uh, if you sub if you if, if for the signal, if you pass through low pass filter, you are going to get only this so only this waveform we are going to get. So but it is having a frequency uh, amplitude of 1 by Ts in the frequency domain. So with the help of some magnification, then we can get back the same signal f of t. So the signal has the amplitude of 1 by Ts in the frequency domain. So, by proper magnification, we can get back the original signal. I've already told you. 
So uh, if you keep this low pass filter, only this is going to get come. This is having a amplitude of one bit. Yes, but we want a amplitude of one. So we, so we, we want a amplitude of one. With the help of the amplification, we can get back the original signal. So we can signalize the amplitude of one bit yes in the frequency domain. So by proper magnification, we can get back the original signal. So finally, I am going to give the time domain representation. So what are the concepts that we have learned? So finally, I am going to I am going to give the time domain representation for the everything I am going to give. So this is the signal above the so this is the delta T S of T. This is the impulse plane. So these two things I am going to get per time. Then I am going to get F T S of T. I am going to prove it. This signal we are going to pass through low pass filter. Low pass filter we are going to get pass. Then we are going to get some signal. Then we are going to do some scaling. Finally, we are going to get y of t is equal to f of t. So what are the outputs? I think are input. So low pass filter means join two points by straight line, or we can say interpolation technique. So join two points by straight line, or we can say interpolation technique. So here is a key for the meaning of this one. So this is the signal, right? So this signal we are going to pass through low pass filter means it is going to join these two signals. These two points by straight line, again straight line, again straight line. Then we can get back this original signal. So, what is the meaning of low pass filter? Low pass filter means basically it is going to join these two points. It is going to join these two points. Like this, if you if you join all those things, we can get back the original signal. So, this basically low pass filter means it is going to join the two points by straight lines. Basically, interpolation technique. So, from that we can get back the original signal. That is the basic meaning of the uh, low pass filter. Low pass filter means it is going to pass only those frequencies which, which are below the cutoff frequencies, or you can say you can also say just joining the two points by straight line. This is called the interpolation technique. So now the next point is over sub over sampling means no overlapping. Critical sampling means just touching, just touching. Under sampling means overlapping happen. So listen carefully. Over sampling means no overlapping. Over sampling means no overlapping. Critical sampling means just touching, just touching. Under sampling means overlapping happen. So this is the point always you have to keep in your mind. So over sampling means no overlap. Over sampling means no overlap. Critical sampling means just touching, just touching, or just overlapping, just overlapping. You can write just touching or just overlapping. You can say just or just overlapping just overlapping just overlapping under sampling means overlapping happen overlapping happen so finally i can say over sampling means no overlapping over sampling means no overlapping so over sampling means no overlapping critical samples means just touching or just overlapping under sampling means overlapping happen or lapping happen. So finally, I can say like this. So finally, I can say over sampling means no overlapping. Critical sampling means just touching or just overlapping. Under sampling means overlapping happen. Overlapping happen. So finally, over sampling means no overlapping. Critical sampling means just touching or just overlapping. Under sampling means overlapping only happen. So now we we'll discuss another point. This ideal low pass filter. So we are going to study. In detail regarding the ideal low pass filter. This is regarding the ideal low, low pass filter. So the what is the input for ideal low pass filter previously? FTS of T, FTS of T, and the output is by of T that we are going to study in detail. So where H of T is the impulse response of the ideal low pass filter. So H of T is the ideal impulse response, uh, impulse response of the ideal low pass filter. So what is Y of T? Y of T is nothing but FTS of T convolution of H of T because H of T is the Impulse response of the ideal low pass filter. So output is the convolution of the input and the impulse response. So my output is called FTS of T convolution of H of T. So FTS of T already we know the expression sigma A is equal to minus seven to plus T F of K is into delta of T minus K is. This expression only we know. For H of T, so this expression I already told you for low pass filter for ideal low pass filter. What is H of T? So I already told you. Right? So basically. Uh, you know, you know, this is right. So this is the right, right? So listen carefully. This is the ideal low pass filter. This ideal low pass filter having the peak value of one. Is having the peak value of one. And uh, what is the total 
uh, total width total width is two omega c two omega c is the total width so uh, how to get the uh, how to get the 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 term given expression i have already told you that is in p so is in p suppose f of t f of t has a Fourier transform f of omega then capital f of t has a Fourier transform which is 2 pi times c f of minus omega right right so now this is uh this is in terms of uh, this is in terms of the frequency domain right so this is in the frequency domain so f of uh, uh this f of omega f of omega it is basically in this fashion right? so f of omega so let me let me write here so let me write here uh, another page so to, to give the expression so this is a f of omega so f of omega what is f of omega so f of or you can say f of omega what, what is f of omega is not like this so this is a peak value is one and this is omega c and this is minus omega c this is a omega in terms of omega so we want the f of the expression we require we require this expression and i already told you i already told you i already told you suppose in time domain in time domain i already told you suppose in time domain if this is t and this is minus t and it is having a peak of a so for f of t like this and f of t like this i already told you what is a f of omega expression i have already told you f of omega is equal to area area is equal to width into height a into here uh let me take it p by 2 p by 2 here area is a into p into uh sa sa of omega into width what is the width here p p by 2 so i already told you right so now this is reverse right so this is reverse so this is a reverse fashion so this is a reverse fashion so this will be reverse fashion now so what is this thing by with the help of do with the help of duality i already told right so now this is the time domain is a frequency domain so now they have copied this one to the frequency domain so what is the time domain expression is nothing but i already told what is the time domain expression now f of t time domain expression is equal to 2 pi into 2 pi into 2 pi into so 2 pi into so this is the expression you want 2 pi into so 2 pi into uh, so 2 pi into simply so it's simply a small correction here I think I am a little confused. So let me let me clear this concept here. So here is in carefully. So this is the so basically in the frequency domain they are writing in this fashion, right? So this is a frequency domain. So this is in the frequency domain. It is like this. It is a frequency domain. It is like this. It is uh, omega c and minus omega c, and this is one. So this is the what they are given in frequency domain. So I want this expression. So we have a basic formula. If this is t, this is f of omega, and this is now f of t. Then this will be two pi times t f of minus omega. F two pi times f of minus omega. I already told you. Then f of minus omega is a term. It is a uh, even signal. So f of minus omega is equal to f of omega. So two pi times c f of omega. So now if you see clearly, so if you see clearly. This is nothing but here. So here it will be this one is like this one. So so what I will do? I will do basically so this is I am going to explain. So this is a time domain expression, this is a frequency domain expression. So same thing I have copied here. So this will be coming here now. So this will be copied here. So this will be copied here. So here f of t is nothing but this one. So f of t is nothing but this one. So what is the expression we are going to get? In terms of t, in terms of omega, replace omega by t. So area, area is nothing but here. So you, you can see, so like this, what is the area? t into t into sum of t by t into capital T by 2. So here, uh, 2 pi times f of minus omega. So here, 2 pi times f of minus omega means what you are going to get? For this one, for this one, what it will be? It will be 2 pi a, 2 pi a, and yet this, uh, 2 pi a, it will be omega by 2, and yet minus omega by 2, as per the concept, as per the concept, right? As per the concept. So now, what I will do in the frequency domain? 
but you know two phi a is nothing but it is equal to one and omega by two is nothing but omega c this time we have studied that so from that what you can say a is equal to one by two a so one by two pi a is equal to one by two pi and omega is equal to two omega c so it is three plus here no it is three plus here that's it so therefore a is nothing but one by two pi so a is nothing but one by two pi a is nothing but one by two pi right so one by two pi and the t is nothing but t t is nothing but no t what is the value of t so two pi a is equal to one and omega by two is equal to omega c and so here t into sum of t into what is t by two so we are going to do it like this. So finally, I am a little bit confused, but you are, I think you have understood. Finally, you are going to use this expression. What I am trying to tell you for this one, we are going to use this expression, which is, so you can see this is the, I think I forgot uh, the concept. Okay, the concept is same. What I am trying to tell you, the concept is same. With the help of duality. So you know duality, right? So for this one, you know the frequency domain expression. Suppose if this is in the frequency domain, what is the time domain expression that we require? So here, what I have told you, here nothing but will become omega c. So basically here is small correction. The t by 2 will become omega by c, not omega by 2. So t by 2, sorry, t by 2 will become omega c. So then what is the value of t? t is equal to 2 times of omega c. Substitute here. In terms of t, substitute 2 omega c. So if you say, simplify. 2 to cancel, we are going to get omega c by pi sum of t into t is equal to 2 omega c. So, 2 to cancel, we are going to get omega c. So, this is the expression that as you have seen to me, omega c by pi sum of omega c t, same thing, same thing we have, we, have, we have got right, same thing we have got right, same expression. So, therefore, what I am going to tell you is that we finally we got it. So, this is f of t, f of t. It is a rectangular pulse here t by 2 here minus t by 2 here it is a if you try to get the full transform the expression is a problem it is called area it is a thing a into t so of omega into with, with this t by 2 suppose if you apply the this one if this is in this fashion what is this fashion which is nothing but you know for f of t with the help of duality f of t a as f of omega then f of cap f of t will have 2 per times of f of minus omega so from that what we can say so, if this will be time domain, so wherever omega is there, we push omega by t, we are going to get ut into sum of t into t by 2. And this will become now 2 pi times c f of minus omega. So, you have to multiply t into c, t will become 2 by a, 2 by a will become. Here, uh, a it will be become now, what it will become now? Here, t will become, here also t, here also t, same thing, it will be t minus here also t, same thing only. That t and here also t only, it will never change. This will remain as it is. Next by two minus t by two will change. And it will remain same as it is. It will remain as it is. Next t by two minus t by two remains as it is. Only thing this will get change. For a small t is replaced by minus omega. So as this is an even function, so therefore same will remain as it is. So in place of small t I have replaced omega because it's a even, it is an even function. So f of minus omega is equal to plus f of omega. So f of minus omega is equal to because f of t is equal to f of minus t, so f of omega is equal to f of minus omega. So because of that reason, I have replaced here. So this is the thing that we have got. So this is the overall graph that we are going. But what is the thing that we want? Here the peak value we, have, we want 1, and omega c value we want t by 2. So 1 is nothing but 2 pi a, and t by 2 is nothing but omega c. So from this a is equal to 1 by 2 pi, and t is equal to 2 omega c. This substitute here, a is equal to 1 by 2 pi, and t is equal to 2 omega c. And if we substitute, we are going to get finally, omega c by pi into sa of t into omega c same thing so therefore finally we got for this uh, uh, low boss filter frequency the frequency the frequency free transform this is a time domain expression which is h of t is equal to omega c by pi into sa of omega c t so for this uh, Fourier transform is this one which is having a cut off frequency of omega c and minus omega c the peak of one same thing i have already told you right so same thing i have already told you so h of t is nothing but omega c by pi into sa of omega c t. So with the help of dual principle, we have got this one.
So with the help of the multi principle, we have got this one. So this point always you have to keep in your mind. So now then what is y of t? Y of t is nothing but f t s of t combination of h of t. So now do the combination of these two things. Combination of these two things f t s of t and h of t. So h of t is which already you know. So if you do the combination, what you are going to get? Omega c by pi is a constant. Omega c by pi is constant. Take it outside. Sigma k is equal to minus f to plus infinity. F of k t is into delta of t minus k t is combination of sum of omega c of t. Because if you see omega c by pi is constant, the sigma is also constant. Sigma k is equal to minus f to plus infinity f of k t s because k t is a constant. So that so there is a reason I kept this one outside. The only thing is delta of t minus k t s combination of sum of omega c t. Only these things we have to do the combination. And this is we can keep outside, and this is also we can keep it outside. So what are the combination we are doing with respect to these two things? Then what it will become? We know it will become sum of omega c of t minus k t s omega c of t minus k t s because you know f of t combination of delta of t is equal to f of t. Similarly, uh, you know this formula. Right? So this formula you have, you know I have already told this important formula. What is the formula? F of t minus t one combination of Delta of t minus t two, which is nothing but f of t minus of t one plus t two. So this formula I want to prove. So therefore, what we can say here, delta of t minus t two is combination of sum of omega c t is inverse of t three plus t by t minus k t s. So sum of omega c of t minus k t s. So where t is the inverse t by t minus k t s. That's it. So therefore, we are going to get like this. So like this, we are going to get here. So this point always you have to keep in your mind. So this point always you have to keep in your mind. So this is the expression that we are going to get here. So this point always you have to keep in your mind. So this is the expression that we are going to get here. So this is the expression that we are going to get here. So a small correction here. Basically, if you see, this is sum of omega c t. Minus zero. Combination of delta of t minus k t s is the thing about sum of omega c t minus zero of s k t s. Means like this, you have to get it. So like this, you should get. So here is one correction. You see, at omega c, I am going to take the answer. So this is also I am going to take it. So therefore, this is the expression that we are going to get. So of omega c t minus zero, combination of delta of t minus k t s is the thing. So of omega c t minus k t s that we are going to get. So this is expression that we are going to get here. So this is expression that we are going to get. So of t is the thing. So of so you know what is so of t? So of x. So of x is the thing. Sin x by x. Now so of T is equal to sin t by t. Then sin of omega c t is equal to sin omega c t by omega c t. So let me assume this is some f of t. I can assume. I can assume f of t. So therefore, f of t combination of so f of t combination of delta of t minus k t s is equal to f of t minus k t s. Right? So Here, wherever t is that t plus t by t minus k t s. So f of t is nothing but f of t is nothing but sum of omega c t. So same thing. So it's correct only. I have to draw. I have to draw only. This is correct only. So basically, what I am going to do is tell you something. So it's not a question yet. Let me tell you a concept here. So let me tell you a concept. What I am trying to tell you. So this is sum of t. I am going to sum of omega c t. I am going to assume which is f of t. So this point this point will be the sum of omega c t. I am going to assume which is f of t. So f of t combination of delta of t minus k t is nothing but f of t minus k t s. So f of t is nothing but sum of omega c t. So f of t minus k t s means when you take the integral to by t by t minus k t s, so we are going to get sum of omega c of t minus k t s. I tell you, I will tell you. So this is a point you have to keep in your mind. So sum of omega c t. I am going to assume f of t. So f of t combination of delta of t minus k t s is nothing but f of t minus k t s. So where f of t is the integral t by 
optimus cadius so f of t is equal to half omega ct so f of t is cadius means it goes to the t minus cadius so we are going to get half omega c into t minus cadius it is correct only so this is what that we are going to get here so like this always you have to analyze if you have some dots you have to analyze so if you simplify this one by the way we are going to get the f of t is nothing but f of t that we are going to get some scale version of f of t that we are going to get so this f of t is nothing but some scale version of f of t but ideally you can see it is equal to f of t also you can assume so y of t if you simplify this one by the way we are going to get it is equal to f of t but actually it will be some scale version of f of t by doing some scaling factor finally we are going to get y of t is equal to f of t f of t that we are going to get here so what is the scaling version we have to multiply by 2s we have to multiply by 2s the scaling factor is i want to do and the multiplying factor yes we have to multiply in order to get this one actually it will be like this one f of t by 2s we are going to get so we have to multiply by 2s in order to get this one so this is the thing that we are going to get so what is fs minimum you know fs is equal to 1 by 2s fs minimum fs minimum is ts is maximum so therefore fs is equal to 1 by 2s here fs is minimum is ts will be maximum i have already told you so for no aliasing so for a no aliasing means i have already told you the sample frequency should be greater than equal to mixed frequency and fs is equal to 1 by ts and fn is equal to 1 by tn to simplify so ts is less than equal to tn so for no aliasing so i have already told this one that for no aliasing Sampling frequency is greater than or equal to request frequency, and sampling interval should be less than or equal to request time interval because F is equal to one by T S and F N is equal to one by T M. From that, if we simplify, we are going to get what is F N frequency? Number of samples per second. So number of samples per second. So T N is equal to one by F N. T N is equal to one by F N, and F S is equal to one by T S. This one I have already told you. So I have already told you. F is greater than or equal to F. F is a it is it is nothing but minimum sampling frequency for no aliasing, which is equal to F. Similarly, T S is always less than or equal to T N. T N is nothing but one by F. I have already told you. I have already told you. Here, F is nothing but mixed frequency. Means it is a minimum sampling frequency, which is equal to F. So here, T F is multiply by multiply by pi and divide by pi. So two pi is nothing but omega m. So pi by omega m. This is a just a Uh, significations we don't need to remember but if you know the concept so these things always you have to keep in your mind here so now we are going to discuss the ne next point which is the practical low pass filter so pra practical low pass filter we are going to discuss see building of any low pass filter is a very severe pain in the neck why it is like this because if you see clearly h of t here they are given omega c by pi into sub omega c t so what is the expansion of this one So I can write like this: H of t is equal to omega c by pi into sine of omega sine 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 of omega is equal to sine of x. So sine of omega c t by omega c t. So basically, if you see clearly, this graph is something like I have already graph I have already told you here: H of t is not equal to zero or t less than zero. This graph I have already told you. So therefore, you can say. If h of t is not equal to zero for t less than zero means it is a non it is a non causal system. Causal system means the h of t should be equal to zero for t less than zero, but here it is not equal to zero. So for t less than zero, it is a non causal system means the output is going to depend upon the future values of the input. But uh, but practically this is impossible. So output see when the output is depending on the future values of the input, then we can say it is impractical to design. So it is not a reliable. Means practically we can't implement those type of systems. So getting of this ideal low pass filter is impractical to build. So that 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 is the reason. Now we are going to go for the practical low pass filter. I think you understood here. The output is not equal to zero for t less than zero. Means it is a non-causal system because the output is going to depend upon the future values of the input. So because of this reason only, this is impractical to design. It is not physically reliable system. Not reliable system. So, do, so that is the reason we are going to discuss the practical low pass filter. So this is a practical low pass filter which has the uh, H of T is the impulse response, H of T is the impulse response, and H of T have uh, the full transformation H of omega. Here the input is H T of is omega in terms of frequency, and the output is Y of omega. So now basically in the uh, Fourier transform I have drawn. Suppose the time domain is it is F T of here F T S of T. So here. It is uh, if you want to write in terms of and that time domain it will become F T S 
of A and this is H of A and this is Y of A. But in the Fourier transform, we can say it will become HTS of omega, it will become H of omega and it will become Y of omega as you can see clearly here. So this is the, this is the, the, the we can say the H of omega is added the practical low pass filter like this you are going to get. So like this you are going to get. So this is the fifth frame figure we are going to get practically. This is the ideal figure but this is a practical low pass filter figure. So this is a frequency response of the practical low pass filter. So this is a cutoff frequency and this is also cutoff frequency. This is omega c and this is minus omega c. So here we are going to keep a a is called as the god band. A is called as the god band. A is called as the god band. So a is the god band frequencies or transition bandwidth of frequencies of practical low pass filter. So A is called as the god band frequencies or the transition bandwidth of frequencies of the practically low pass filter. So this A is called as the A is called as the god band frequencies or the transition bandwidth of the frequencies of the practically low pass filter. So properly maintaining gap which is at least a transition band gap between the two triangular pulses in F2 of S omega. So properly maintained gap which is at least transition band gap between the two triangular pulses in F2 S of omega. So this is the guard band. So this is the amount of gap that we need to keep keep keep, keep between the at least the at least this much amount of gap we need to keep between the two pulses in the FTS of omega. So what I am trying to do is very simple. This much amount of band gap we have to keep extra, uh, across the two pulses, two pulses in the FTS of omega. So A is called as the God band frequencies or the transition bandwidth of frequencies of the practical low pass filter. So properly we have to maintain this much amount of gap which is at least a transition band gap between the two triangle pulses in FTS of omega. So this is the the FTS of omega, so this is a pulse 1, pulse 2, pulse 3, or I have already told you, this is FM, this is minus FM, in, in terms of if I am right, I am going to draw, so this will become FS, and omega is nothing but here 2 pay FS, means FS, here FS minus FM, here it is a FM, so between these two, the gap should be at least A, between these two things, the gap should be at least A, omega, you know, this is 2 pay FS, so now, what is the meaning of oversampling, oversampling means, what is the meaning of oversampling? No overlapping. Oversampling is, I have already told you, there is no overlapping. Oversampling is, there is no overlapping. When Fs minus Fm greater than or equal to Fm plus A, I have already told you, which is, at least the band gap between the artist, these two waveforms should be A. So, no oversampling is no overlap. No overlap. Or oversampling is also called as a no overlap. So, let me write that point. So, oversampling is also called as a no overlap. No overlap between the two pulses between the two waveforms and the the gap between must be at least a so fs minus fm should be greater than or equal to fm plus a so if you simplify what you are going to get fs is greater than or equal to two times of fm plus a so a is the extra thing that we need to keep here there there is a is zero but here a is not equal to zero so what is fs minimum fs minimum is equal to fm plus a samples per second means this one number of samples that we, to, that we need to sample per second and minimum sampling frequency is nothing but liquid frequency and it's you this samples per second the liquid frequency is nothing but two times of fm plus a so the a is equal to zero but here a is not equal to zero so these things always you have to keep in your mind so these things always you have to keep in your mind so let me write here so let me write these two formulas so that you can easily able to remember for a lot of amount of time so so what is the so, so the word general formula, the general formula is F is greater than or equal to two times of FM plus A. A is the God band, God band of frequencies, God band of frequencies or the transition bandwidth of frequencies of the practical low pass filter. So A is equal to zero for for ideal, for ideal low pass filter, for ideal low pass filter. But A is not equal to zero for the practical low pass filter so for practical low pass filter so this point always you have to keep in your mind and what is the liquid frequency the liquid frequency is nothing but minimum sampling frequency the minimum sampling frequency is nothing but uh, for no areas in this two fm plus a so therefore a is equal to zero for ideal low pass filter and a is not equal to zero for practical low pass filter so this is a very very important thing 
we can say in so many we can say that the sampling frequency should be always variable in terms of a complex CA. The A is called as the god band of the frequencies or the transition bandwidth of the frequencies. This much amount of bandwidth we have to keep against two, two functions if we don't want any overlap or aliasing. So definitely the uh, minimum sampling frequency is for the liquid frequency which is equal to a complex A. So A is equal to zero for ideal low pass filter and A is not equal to zero for the practical low pass filter. So by the way, I can say that the sampling frequency should be always given or equal to two times the basis of the frequency plus A. And here, uh, the liquid frequency is nothing but it is a minimum sampling frequency which is equal to two into F M plus A. And A is equal to zero for the ideal low pass filter and A is not equal to zero for the practical low pass filter. So these things always they have to keep in mind. So now, like this, always you have to keep in mind. Over, over sampling with slow aliasing effect. I have already told you here, right? Over sampling with slow overlapping. Critical sampling is just sampling of just, uh, just overlapping or just touching. Under sampling means overlapping happen. So this points I have already told you. So now let's go for the another point. What is the another point here? So now, here I am going to tell you, uh, suppose a different type of signals I am going to tell you. How the frequency is how to figure out the maximum frequency it is going to present in a signal f of t. Suppose f of t is there like this, f of t like this it is there. Suppose for, a, for f of t, you, you have basically for f of t, you have drawn the frequency response for your transform. Then let me assume the maximum, see for f of t, try to figure out the Fourier transform. So we are going to get some certain figure, right? From that we can figure out what is the maximum frequency. So it is presented. So it, it can have any graph and finally it is present up to omega m so what is the maximum frequency omega m radians per second suppose if you are doing square of the signal f square of t so i have already told you here we are doing the product of the two signals the product of the two signals means in the in the uh, in the Fourier transform it will become convolution i have already told you product in time domain will lead to convolution in the frequency domain convolution means basically shifting the signal Convolution means basically we are shifting the signal. We are basically shifting the signal. So convolution. So therefore, here f of omega convolution of f of omega. So f of omega f of omega convolution of f of omega. So basically, what is the meaning of this one? So therefore, if you simplify, we are going to get two times of two omega m is that. So this signal is going to present up to two omega m and minus two omega m. So maximum frequency is two omega m radians per second. Suppose if you go for the nth times. If you multiply the signal n times, then the, uh, if you draw the Fourier transform for the signal, it will present up to n omega n and minus, o, minus n omega n. So this is a waveform, it can present up to this much amount of range of frequency. So what is the maximum frequency it is going to present, which is n into omega m radians per second. So what I am trying to tell you is very simple. Suppose, listen carefully, so listen carefully, suppose f of t is there, suppose f of t is there, suppose f of t is there. So, with the help of Fourier transform, with the help of Fourier transform for the signal, I have figured out that omega m is the maximum, omega m is the maximum frequency which is present in that signal f of t. Suppose if I do the f square of the t, then if I try, if you try to figure out the Fourier transform of the signal, and if I try to, if, so I try, I have figured out the Fourier transform of the signal, and if I try to find what is the maximum frequency present in the signal, which is two times of omega m. Similarly, suppose if I go for cubes of the t, so if I cube, the uh, if I f cube of t, then the if you try to find the Fourier transform for the signal, then the signal is going to present for a frequency range up to t times of omega m. So this is the maximum frequency which is going to present in the signal. Suppose if you go for the n times, if you go for the n times of the signal, then the if you try to if you try to find the the, uh, the, 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 the Fourier transform for that signal and if you see the maximum frequency which is going to present in the signal is nothing but n into omega m. So this is what I am trying to tell you. The unit is here radians per second. Omega m is unit is the radians per second. So this is what I am trying to tell you. Same concept you can even apply for the frequency fm also. Here it is fm is here it is 2 times of fm. Here it is 3 times of fm and here it is 10 times of fm. So this point always you have to keep in your mind. So that's what we can say. For f of t, for f of t, the maximum message, the maximum frequency present in the signal is omega m. So for f and 
f of tn to so you can say uh, f of tn to the power of n then for this one the maximum frequency present in the signal is nothing but n into omega m so this is what i'm trying to tell you so for f of t if omega m is a maximum frequency present in the signal then f of t over the power of n f of t over the power of n then this signal will have a maximum frequency which is n into omega m so finally i can say so that f of t it is having a maximum frequency of omega m then f of t over the power of n will have the maximum frequency which is n into omega m so finally i can say if f of t is having the omega m as a maximum frequency then f of t over the power of n will have the maximum frequency which is n into omega m when into omega m so up to this range it is going to get covered so here, here, here you can see clearly f of t is going to cover from minus omega m to omega m then f square of t will cover from minus 2 omega m to plus 2 omega m and f of t over the power of n will cover the frequency range from minus n omega m to plus n omega m means the maximum frequency present here is omega m if the maximum frequency present in the signal is 2 into omega m similarly for this one the maximum frequency present is n into omega n m so these things always you have to keep in your mind so now let's go for the next point suppose f of t is equal to sa of a t sa of a t is nothing but you know sa of x is equal to sin x by x so sa of a t is nothing but sin a t by a t so now tell me this is in terms of omega sin omega t sin omega t right sin omega omega is equal to a so omega is nothing but a a it is per second so now tell me for f square of t for f square of t is nothing but f square of t means i have already told you f of t the the frequency present is a so then for f square of t which will become two times of a similarly f, f of t over the power of n means n times of a so this is what i am trying to tell you so this is an example for this concept so f of t is equal to sa of at so you know i have already told you what is the meaning of sa of x sa of x is equal to i have already told you sin x by x so from this we can say here x is nothing but a t so sin omega t omega is nothing but a so here the frequency of the signal is a the frequency of the, of the signal is a radians per second suppose if i do square of the signal then the, the signal will have a frequency which is two times of a and if of t on the power of n then the signal will have a frequency which is n times of a in terms of radians per second so now let's go for the next point suppose f1 of t is having a frequency which is suppose f1 of t is having a frequency which is omega m1 and f2 of t is having a frequency omega m2 and f3 of t has a frequency omega m3 and similarly f1 of t which has a frequency omega m n these are the maximum frequencies in units per second so f1 of t in the, in the f1 of t the maximum frequency present is omega m1 in f2 of t the maximum frequency present is omega m2 in f3 of t the maximum frequency present is omega m3 similarly for fn uh, fn of t the maximum frequency present is omega n n these are the maximum frequencies in the in, in radians per second uh, which are present for each and every signal so now let's go for different types of operations and we will see what is the overall uh, signal has the maximum frequency suppose if i do the algebraic addition of all these signals if i do the algebraic addition of all these signals then what is the maximum frequency which is present which is nothing but if i do the if i do the addition of all the signals the maximum frequency present in the overall signal is the maximum value of out of all these individual frequencies so if i do the addition of all the signals then the maximum frequency is nothing but the maximum frequency is nothing but it's the maximum value of the all the individual frequencies because if you do the fourier transfer for the all the signals it will become f1 of omega plus f2 of omega plus f up to f1 of omega out of this whichever the having the maximum frequency only up to that range only is going to get covered so addition of f1 of omega plus f2 of omega up to f1 of omega so therefore what you are going to get this addition of all the graphs if you do the addition of all the graphs then the for the overall signal the maximum frequency is nothing but the maximum frequency is nothing but it is a maximum value of all the of all the out of all this which are is having the maximum frequency that will become the maximum frequency for this overall signal suppose if i do the multiplication of all these signals see if i do the multiplication of all these signals what is the meaning of this one i have already told you i have already told you which is 
the multiplication in the time domain relates to convolution in the frequency domain. The multiplication in the the multiplication in the time domain will lead to uh, the multiplication in time domain will lead to will lead to basically convolution frequency domain. So therefore, what is the overall signal maximum frequency is nothing but summation summation of all the individual maximum frequencies. So overall signal maximum frequency is the summation of all the individual maximum frequencies. Similarly, suppose if you do the convolution of all the signals, if you do the convolution of all the signals in the time domain, then I have already told you convolution in time domain is nothing but it is a product in the frequency domain. So it is a it is a product in the frequency domain. So therefore, what is the maximum frequency? It will become minimum value of the all the frequencies. Out of all these things, whichever is the minimum, it will become the maximum frequency for all these signals. So these things always you have to keep in your mind. So these things always you have to keep in your mind. So now, this is easy to remember. See, this is the arithmetic operation. Either you do addition or either you do, you do subtraction, anything. Either you do addition, either it, see, plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus. So it is very uh, apt to keep like this, plus or minus, uh, plus or minus, or plus or minus. It, it can be anything. So then, if it's a plus or minus, plus or minus, means just to the full classroom of final for this one. F1 of omega plus or minus, F2 of omega plus or minus, F3 of omega up to uh, plus or minus F1 of omega. So basically, we are adding, we are adding all the frequency responses. So basically, we are adding all the frequency responses. So for this overall signal, the maximum frequency is nothing but is a maximum value of out of all the frequencies, out of all these, out of all the frequencies which is having the maximum that will become the the maximum frequency for this overall signal. Suppose if you are doing the product in the time domain, then it will become conversion in the frequency domain. Conversion in the frequency domain means addition, do the addition, do the addition, do the addition. So do the addition of all these frequencies, and then this will be become the maximum frequency for this overall signal. So conversion in time domain will lead to the product in the frequency domain. So the means the product means minimum value, minimum value. So therefore the maximum frequency is nothing but is a minimum value of out of all these frequencies. Out of all these frequencies, the minimum frequency is nothing but it is a maximum value out of all this. Uh, it is a maximum frequency which is going to be present in this overall signal. So this is what I am trying to tell you. So whether you do addition or whether you do subtraction, then the overall maximum frequency is nothing but it is a maximum value of out of all the signals. And the product in the time domain will lead to convolution. Convolution means basically you have to go for the addition of all the energy frequencies in order to get the maximum frequency present in the overall signal. And the product in the time domain will and the convolution time domain will lead to multiplication frequency domain. So multiplication must go for the minimum. Go for the minimum. So go for the minimum. So listen carefully. So listen carefully. So listen carefully. Uh, I will tell you. See, in the frequency domain, I am going to leave the concept of frequency domain. So in the frequency domain, suppose if you are doing addition, if you are doing addition of subtraction, then what is the omega max? Omega max is nothing but it is the maximum value out of all frequencies, out of all frequencies. Suppose if you are uh, doing the convolution in the frequency domain, then the maximum missing signal frequency is nothing but summation, summation of all the individual frequencies. Similarly, suppose if you are uh, uh, doing the the if you are doing the product in the frequency domain, then it will become it will become the maximum frequency is nothing but it is a minimum value out of all these individual frequencies. So this one's always you have to keep in your mind. So let me write here in a short cut manner time domain frequency domain. So here I will write here. So this is a time domain and this is the frequency domain and this is the maximum frequency. Suppose in the time domain we are doing addition or subtraction, same thing will happen in the frequency domain also. Then the maximum message signal frequency is equal to the maximum value of out of all the individual. Out of all the individual. Similarly, suppose if you are doing the product in time domain, the product in time domain is combination in the frequency domain. So combination is basically you have to go for the addition. So you have to go for the addition. You have to go for the addition. So you have to go for the addition. Okay, now the combination time domain is multiplication frequency domain. So here omega max is nothing but minimum value. It is a minimum value. It is a 
minimum value. It is a minimum value. So it is a minimum value. So this point always you have to keep in mind. So you can say in the time domain, it will be an issue of fraction. Same thing will happen with frequency domain also. In the maximum measure of signal frequencies, the maximum value out of all the individual frequencies. That the product of the time domain will lead to combination of frequency domain. In the in the summation of all the maximum frequencies will lead to maximum value of the overall frequency. Similarly, combination of time domain will lead to product in the frequency domain. Then the maximum measure of signal frequency is the minimum value out of all the individual frequencies. So this point always you have to keep in mind. So I request you to, uh, if you remember this concept, then you can solve any type of questions in a very fraction of seconds. So I request you to remember this table for your lifetime, for your lifetime. So so that you can become a very uh, good amount of subject knowledge. So you don't have to remember this one, even though if you have the idea what happens in the frequency, from that we can say. So here addition is, so you can see, in the frequency domain, if you are doing addition or subtraction is, it is a maximum value, just take the maximum value out of all these things. Here, convolution is just go for the addition. There are multiplication is go for the minimum. That's it. This is a very intuitive, very, very intuitive. So very intuitive, right? So multiplication means, suppose, suppose, one of the, suppose, for simple as the maximum frequency two, and one is having a uh, frequency, which is suppose, uh, uh, suppose it is a, uh, uh, suppose it is zero. So zero into two is nothing but zero only. So zero into two is nothing but zero only. So that is the reason we are taking the minimum value. And that. So whenever you are multiplying two signals, one is having two frequency and other is having zero frequency. So if you multiply, what is the thing that we are going to get? It is nothing but zero. So minimum only you are going to get. So that is the reason you have to choose the minimum value. So that is, so that is, so that is the reason I have it in this fashion. So these things always you have to keep in your mind. So if you remember these things, it is easy to solve these type of questions. So now, the next point is, suppose in 40 as the frequency omega n, then here in the 40, here is nothing but scale up, we are just not playing a scale up. Frequency will never change, it will remain as it is. See, sine omega t as a frequency omega, 2 into sine omega t has the same frequency omega m only, only the amplitude is going to get changes. And the frequency will never change. Only we are going to change the output of this output of the signal by doing the um, multiplication by scalar quantity. So f of t as the suppose f of t signal is there. In this, the maximum frequency present is omega n. Then a into f of t. So a is nothing but a scalar multiple. Means we are only increasing the amplitude, but the frequency will be the same as it is. So the signal will also have the maximum frequency, which is omega m only. So this forms always you have to keep in your mind here. Now, basically, here, let me tell you a small concept that we have learned already. See, I have already told you one important point. What I have told you? See, I have already told you, for f of t, if omega m is the frequency, it is the maximum frequency which is present in this signal f of t. Suppose f square of t, then what is the meaning of f square of t? It is equal to f of t into f of t. So, I have already told you, product in time domain will use to convolution and frequency domain. So, convolution means, I have already told you, convolution means you have to add all the frequencies. So, if you add all these frequencies, what is the maximum message signal which is present, which is in F of T, the frequency which is present is omega m, plus again in F of T, the message signal frequency is omega m. So, it will become two times of omega m. So, with the help of this concept, so you have to add all the frequencies. So for f of the frequency omega m, another the, the other signal is also f of t, the frequency omega m. So you add the, these two things we get to omega m. Suppose if you go for the f cube of t, so f cube of t is nothing more f of t into f of t into f of t. So now you can see clearly what is the net message signal maximum frequency for f of t. The, the point in time will reach to conventional frequency difference. So conventional means add all the frequencies. So here f of t, the frequency present is omega m, again another f of t, the message frequency is omega m, and another f of t, the frequency present is omega m. So if you add all these things, you are going to get 3 omega m. Similarly, suppose f into the power of t, means you have, to, you have to multiply f of t 10 times, 10 times you have to multiply. So what is the message signal, maximum, the maximum signal, the maximum frequency present in this overall signal is something that just add all the frequencies omega m plus omega m up to n times. So if we add n times, so it becomes 10 into omega m. 
to the food that is a reason have to him for a walk with the frequency of medium, if I have screwed up with the frequency of business to a medium, and for if give off to the frequency of business to a medium, so when for a walk to the power of any list of frequency of present is an end to a medium. I want to prove that. So, this suppose even if you forgot this formula, still you can get with the help of these things, which is the product in the time will be used to convolution. Convolution means add all the signal for each and every cell. Signal try to add all these frequencies, then we are going to get the overall signal maximum frequency. So, these points always you have to keep in your mind. So, now let's go for the another point. Suppose f of t is there, cos omega mt. Suppose f of t is equal to cos omega t, cos omega mt. So, for f of t is there, which is cos omega mt. Now, the next concept is here. Suppose f of t is there, cos omega mt. So, f of t is equal to cos omega t cos omega mt. For this, uh, what is the Fourier transform? f of omega is equal to pi into delta of omega minus omega m plus delta into delta of omega plus omega m. I have already told you this one, right? I have already told you there, f of t is equal to cos omega naught t. Further, the Fourier transform is pi into omega minus omega, delta of omega minus omega naught plus delta of omega plus omega naught. I have already told you this one, right? In place of omega naught, I have replaced omega naught by omega m. Suppose if it is sign means here, you are divided by j and you are plus plus by minus. I've already told right that we write those formulas so that you can easily able to understand. So for cos omega naught t, what is the Fourier transform? The Fourier transform is pi into delta of omega minus omega naught plus delta of omega plus omega naught. Suppose sine omega naught t, what is the Fourier transform? Pi by j into delta of omega minus omega naught minus delta of omega plus omega naught. I have already told it. I have already told this point. You have to keep it j extra j a and plus by minus. I have already told you right. So in place of omega I have replaced omega by omega n. So this is the thing we got. Suppose if I draw the frequency response means if I draw the f of omega with respect to omega. So it is pi into delta of omega minus omega minus at omega m there is an impulse which is having an area of pi and similarly at omega is equal to minus omega m there is an area of impulse pi so this is a graph that we are going to get here so as you can see clearly this is a pulse that we are going to get suppose delta t s of t delta t s of t is the thing it is a periodic impulse which is sigma k is equal to minus m to present the delta of t minus k t s so this is the impulse of a diameter of Ts. For this, if you try to find the Fourier transform, so this is a periodic signal. For this periodic signal, if you try to find the Fourier transform, I have already told you, the radius of omega is omega naught. Omega, omega is nothing but 2 pi by Ts of 2 pi Fs. Into sigma k is equal to minus m to plus m delta of omega minus k omega naught, where omega is equal to 2 pi Fs of 2 pi by Ts. This one I already told you that so many number of times. So now I am going to multiply these two signals. If I am going to multiply these two signals, then what is the thing here? f of t into delta d s of t means the product of time to be released to combination frequency domain is 1 by 2 pi into f of omega, combination of delta d s of omega, which is nothing but y of omega, I am going to assume. So this is the y of omega I am going to get assume. Then what is going to happen? So just show the combination of these two things. This signal and this signal to the combination. To the convolution, that's it. Combination means shifting, shifting the signal. Shifting the signal, so therefore, if you see clearly, so this is the y of omega. So this is the y of omega. Here there is a 1 by 2 pi. 1 by 2 pi is there. 1 by 2 pi is there. Here 2 pi by t s is there. So 2 pi 2 pi cancels, right? 2 pi 2 pi cancels. Finally, you are going to get 1 by t s. You are going to get 1 by t s. But here there is a uh, uh, amount of pi. So 1 by t s into t pi is nothing but pi by t s. So pi by t s is the peak value, or you can say area value, pi by t s. So then what is the thing that they are going to get remain? It is delta of omega minus omega m plus delta of omega plus omega m combination of delta of omega minus k omega naught with a sigma. So if I write what I am going to get finally, if I write the final expression, y of omega is nothing but pi by p s sigma k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity delta of omega minus omega m plus Delta of omega plus omega n. Convolution of convolution of convolution of delta of t delta of omega minus k omega no. 
so this is what that we are going to get so this is what that we are going to get so what 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 so what is going to happen just you know how to draw the graph right? so this is the y of omega i am going to draw the order graph so this is the omega this is the omega m and this is the minus omega m so take here which is this is small as omega naught so this is the omega naught so this is the 2 omega naught this is the minus omega naught this is the minus 2 omega naught so shift shift the signal here shift the signal so shift this one to here to become omega naught plus omega m here omega naught minus omega m again shift the signal here it will become it will become here this will become here here will be another, will be another thing so here there will be another graph like this it will be this is 2 omega naught plus omega m and this is 2 omega naught minus omega m similarly you shift this part here minus omega naught will become this will become nothing but minus omega naught minus omega m this minus omega naught plus omega m similarly this is minus 2 omega naught so this is this will become minus 2 omega naught plus omega m and this uh, other part the other part is there here it will be minus 2 omega naught minus omega m so like this it will go like this it will go for all time so we will go we will focus we will focus only on the positive region only we are going to for consider only the positive frequency only we are going to cause the birth of the negative frequencies because frequency are always positive so we are going to consider only the positive frequency only we are going to consider so if you see what are the frequencies which are present in the positive frequency i want to consider so what are the frequencies which are present in the positive region i want to consider so you can see i will write in terms of fm it is very easy to write in terms of fm rather than omega m omega n it will be very confusing right so what is omega naught? omega naught is equal to 2 pi fs and omega m is nothing but 2 pi fm the ps is called as a sampling interval ps is nothing but is a tangent of the this signal the simple strain so this is a tangent of the simple strain this is the tangent of the tangent of the uh, simple strain or sampling interval and omega or uh, not or omega is is a sampling frequency and fs is called as a sampling frequency this is a Omega is for sampling frequency and radians per second. Whereas omega m is the, the message signal frequency in the radians per second. And what is fs? fs is equal to 1 by ts. So, this fs, this ts and this omega or omega s, they are basically associated with the simple strain. Omega m is with respect to message signal frequency. So, now in the positive frequencies, I want to know what are the frequencies which are present. I want to see here. So, you can see this is fm. This is nothing but fs minus fm fs plus fm similarly uh, then 2 fs minus fm 2 fs plus fm like that it will go so therefore the frequencies which are present here the frequencies which are present in the signal y of omega is nothing but fm fs F, fs minus fm fs plus fm 2 fs plus fm 2 fs minus fm 3 fs plus fm 3 fs minus fm and goes on and goes on these are going to be present so you have to you have to write like this so the frequencies which are present in the in the in the y of omega the frequency which are present in the in the y of omega which are fm here fs plus fm here it is fs minus fm similarly 2 fs plus fm 2 fs minus fm similarly 3 fs plus fm 3 fs minus fm so simply if you want if i if i want to write in the same simply i can write like this simply i can write like this fm fm comma fs plus or minus fm 2 fs plus or minus fm similarly 3 fs plus or minus fm similarly 4 fs plus or minus f and goes on and goes on so i can write a shortcut like this so these are the frequencies so these are the frequencies which are present these are the frequencies which are present in the these are the frequencies which are present in the signal y of t or y of omega so you can see y of t so this is a, this is nothing but y of t i am going to assume so f of t into delta t s of t is nothing but y of t i am going to assume so in the y of t the frequencies which are present are in the y of t the frequencies present that fs f of plus or minus f m 3 fs plus or minus f m 3 fs plus or minus f m 4 fs plus or minus f m and goes on and goes on 
So these these were number of frequencies which are going to be present. So listen carefully. FM, F S plus R minus FM, two F S plus R minus FM, three F S plus R minus FM, four F S plus R minus FM, and so on, so on, so on. So in the net, in the net, in the frequencies are going to be present in a single wave field. So all these things are going to be present. So finally, the frequencies which are going to be present in a single wave field are F S, sorry F M, F S plus R minus FM. F S plus R minus F M, three F S plus R minus F M, four F S plus R minus F M, and goes on. This way, number of frequencies are going to be present in the signal by F T. As you can see clearly from this picture, also you can see. So this is a F M. This is F S plus F M. This is F S minus F M. This is two F S plus F M, and this is two F S minus F M, and goes on. So this way, number of frequencies are going to be present in the signal. So these are the Hamilton like this, Hamilton like this. But all these frequencies are going to be present in the signal by F T. So now, finally, the other thing is here. I am going to give a small table. So this table you have to remember. So these are the different tools to analyze. These are the different tools to analyze. So I am going to tell you what is the time domain and its nature, and the frequency domain and its nature. I am going to discuss in a very detailed manner. So continuous time Fourier series. So continuous time Fourier series means it is applicable for the continuous time signal and which are periodic in nature. So. Continuous, continuous time Fourier series is applicable to continuous time periodic signals, continuous time and periodic signals, continuous time and periodic signals. So continuous time and periodic signals. For these signals, we are going to apply the uh, we 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 are going to apply the uh, continuous time Fourier series. Then what we are going to get the frequency domain? We are going to get the magnitude spectrum as well as the phase spectrum. We are going to get the magnitude spectrum and phase spectrum. Magnitude spectrum is discrete in nature. And the phase spectrum is also discrete in nature, and these are aperiodic, and these are aperiodic. These are aperiodic in nature. These are aperiodic. They are not repeating. They are just a wave. They are just a wave. So I already told you, the magnetic spectrum is even nature, and the and the phase spectrum is odd in nature. So therefore, we can say, in the time domain, the signal is continuous as well as as well as periodic, but in the frequency domain, the f of omega it will have so. Uh, basically, discrete nature means that one, that uh, Fourier series coefficients. Those are discrete in nature. They are discrete in nature. They are discrete in nature because they are defined only for n is equal to plus or minus one, plus or minus two. So definitely, their magnitude is positive spec, the real spectrum, and the and the phase angle is all spectrum. I have already told you right. So therefore, finally, I can say continuous time Fourier series it is applicable for the continuous time periodic signals. So therefore, by this way, we are going to figure out the. So by this, we are going to get the Fourier series coefficients. Fourier series coefficients are at n ranges from minus one to two plus one to three. We are going to get some complex values. So their magnitude is basically even spectrum, but their phase angle is uh, odd spectrum. Already I told you, they are basically uh, they are discrete in nature because they are defined only from n is equal to minus one to two plus one to three. So n is always a integers. It is a integers. Now continuous time Fourier transform. So Fourier transform is it is applicable for the continuous time and aperiodic signals. So Fourier transform in continuous time is also continuous time. So Fourier transform is basically ap applicable to aperiodic signals. Then for aperiodic signals, continuous time and ap aperiodic signals, if you apply the Fourier transform, then what is going to happen? Then you are going to get f of omega. The f of omega is nothing but this defined for. Omega is equal to minus seven to plus seven to the region. Every, every value of omega means zero point zero zero one zero point zero zero two means it is a continuous. It is a continuous in nature because omega is varying from minus seven to plus seven to the. It can be any real number. So that is the reason it is a continuous. And f of omega, I already told you, it is also a complex number. Its magnitude spectrum is even spectrum, and the phase angle spectrum is odd spectrum. So it is a continuous nature, and it is also aperiodic because there is nothing like repetition. Now discrete time. Fourier series. Let's go for discrete time Fourier series. Discrete time Fourier series is applicable for discrete time signals which are periodic in nature, which are periodic in nature. Similarly, discrete time Fourier transforms. This is applicable to discrete time signals which are periodic in nature, which are periodic in nature. I have already told you this point. So now, so now for periodic signals, means they are discrete in nature. If you apply a discrete time Fourier transform, then what you are going to get? They are going to get Continuous in nature, they are going to get continuous in nature, and which are periodic in, which are basically period. So if you if you remember, if you know these thing, these two things, because I have not told this concept in a detailed manner. So if you listen, 
my classes, I have not told these two things in a detailed manner. I have not given that. I have not given any detailed analysis. So if you remember these two things, then getting this is a very piece of cake. How it is like this? Let us see here. So this is, see, this you don't have to remember. This will be, you can usually, you can, you can write that. There is nothing like to remember. Only this one, how to remember, let me tell you. So here, continuous and apologetic. So write the opposite. Right? Apologetic means periodic. Here it is script. Here also discrete. So here, apologetic means here it is a period. That's it. So here, continuous is period. Continuous. Apologetic means period. Here discrete means here discrete. And apologetic means here period. Because in, in my classes, I have told you, continuous term for your season, continuous term for a transfer of detail, but I have not told discrete term for your transfer of discrete term for a series. I have not explained clearly. So you can get these two things. But if you know these two things, uh, from this, how to get these things, I have already told you, right? Just write the opposite. So let me write here. So let me write this table again so that you can easily able to understand what I am trying to tell you. So listen, I will write this table. Listen carefully. So listen carefully. I can tell you uh, what is the nature. So this is a tool. These are the different tools. So this is a time domain and its nature. Time domain and its nature. And this is a frequency domain and its nature. So for the first tool is continuous time for each series. See, continuous time for each series is nothing but what is the meaning of this one? It is applicable to continuous time. It is applicable to continuous time and periodic signals. It is simple, right? Continuous time for each series means it is applicable to all the continuous time signals which are periodic in nature. Then if you, uh, if you, in the previous domain means, you know, uh, for the continuous time for each series, you are going to get the four series permissions which are defined from sigma, uh, the commons you go for the complex one, uh, exponential, where sigma is from minus into plus into p, these are only uh, integer values, only integer values. So, this uh, Fourier series functions are complex numbers. Complex numbers means they have the magnitude as well as the phase. So, magnitude is even spectrum and the phase is R spectrum and they are defined only for integer values of n. A integer values of n, so we can say integer means discrete, discrete discrete and uh, they are aperiodic because there is nothing like they are repeating they are not repeating right so it is a aperiodic then comes the continuous time for a transform continuous time for a transform is applicable to continuous time signals which are aperiodic in nature which are aperiodic in nature and uh, for f of t you are going to f of omega f of omega means omega is defined from minus m to plus m to t so omega will take any real number so it is a continuous it is a continuous so we can say it is a continuous the waveform is also continuous. Here the waveform is discrete because it is different from only discrete values of n. Only digit values of n. Here omega is uh, uh, from minus m to plus to plus m to So omega is I take in the real number also. Any real value is taking like 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 also. So therefore, for that you are going to get the corresponding value of, of, of omega is you are also you are going to get. So the graph above omega is also complex number the output as well as the phase. Magnitude is a uh, even spectrum on the phase is the R spectrum, but it is a continuous in nature and it is also aperiodic. It is also aperiodic. It is also aperiodic. Then go for the discrete time Fourier series. I will go here. Discrete time Fourier transform. I will go. Discrete time Fourier series means it is applicable to discrete time signals which are periodic in nature. Discrete time Fourier transform means it is applicable for it is applicable to discrete time signals which are aperiodic in nature. Simple theorem in unity and you want to explain. Discrete time Fourier series means it's applicable to discrete time signals which are periodic in nature. Discrete time Fourier transform means it's applicable to discrete time signals which are periodic in nature. Now, in the uh, frequency domain, let me explain what is the meaning of this one. So, now, you know this one, right? You know your concept, right? So, this concept, just uh, apply this concept here. So, this concept here. What is the concept here? They are discrete and periodic. And periodic. So, here it will become discrete and it will become a periodic. Discrete and periodic. That's it. Discrete and periodic. So here, this will be like this one. So here, uh, here it will be continuous and aperiodic. So it will become continuous and periodic. That's it. Continuous and periodic. And periodic. That's it. There is no uh, extra thing. So it is the only thing we have to keep in mind. So what I am trying to tell you. So I have already told the different tools. There is a time domain and its nature. Frequency domain and its nature. So, in the continuous time Fourier series, it is applicable to 
कंडरेस टाइम फोरिंग से इसमें से डिजाइन करने के कंडरेस टाइम सिग्नल बचा पीरियडिक ही नेचर अन्य कंडरेस टाइम फोरिंग से इसमें से डिजाइन करने के कंडरेस टाइम सिग्नल बचा पीरियडिक ही नेचर बिस्किट टाइम फोरिंग से इसमें से डिजाइन करने के बिस्किट टाइम सिग्नल बचा पीरियडिक ही नेचर बिस्किट टाइम फोरिंग से इसमें से डिजाइन करने के बिस्किट टाइम सिग्नल बचा पीरियडिक ही नेचर फोरिंग से इसमें से डिजाइन करने के बिस्किट टाइम सिग्नल बचा पीरियडिक ही नेचर बिस्किट टाइम सिग्नल बचा पीरियडिक ही नेचर फोरिंग से इसमें से डिजाइन करने के बिस्किट टाइम सिग्नल बचा पीरियडिक ही नेचर बिस्किट Now what we are going to do in this case, Fourier series means here we are going to use the value of n. N we are going to use. Here we are going to use the value of n. N is lying from minus infinity to plus infinity, and it is a integers. It is basically integers. It is only integers. It is only integers means it is discrete in nature. Integers means it is discrete in nature. It is discrete, and we are not going to get any periodic waveform because it is also complex number. The magnitude is a even spectrum, and the phase angle is odd spectrum, so it is a aperiodic. Similarly, here for quantum step for a transform, the first transform is omega. We are going to get omega is nothing but omega is lying from minus infinity to plus infinity, and it is a real number. Omega is a real number. Real means real integer, real real value. Is it can take any value like zero point zero 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 one also? It can it can take. So definitely, it will become continuous in nature because of above omega is also complex number. Then my case, the uh, spectrum of these angles are spectrum. So therefore, we can say it will take a real value. So therefore, the uh, graph is going to become continuous. It will become continuous. But there is nothing like a periodic. It will also become a periodic. Now, same thing for this one. These things I have already told. See, this kind of Fourier series means here also we are going to use the value of n, right? Here also we are going to use the value of n. N is same thing. Same thing. Same concept. 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 Here also n is equal to integers. Here also n is equal to integers, right? Here also n is equal to integers means discrete, discrete. Same thing, discrete, discrete. But here, ah, uh, here, uh, discrete of Fourier transform is equal to only omega. Omega means here also minus equal to plus infinity. Here omega is also real value. Real value means continuous. Real value means continuous. So continuous. The only thing is here, here periodic, here periodic means here it becomes periodic and periodic. That's it. This is only difference. This is only difference. We have this aperiodic, aperiodic. So it will become periodic and periodic. And the main thing I have, I have explained in a very detailed manner also. So you know, so you know all these four steps. You know all these things, and also you know these things also. And I have already told you how uh, how you will get discrete and how you will get continuous only. The remaining two things are just periodic. They are periodic in nature because they are discrete time signals. So therefore, they are periodic. That's it. So this is the only thing. These two things I have to remember. Even the things I have already explained, how to remember, how to remember. Even though you forgot, the remaining things you can easily get it. So finally, I can I can explain like this. Finally, I can say the continuous time Fourier series is applicable to continuous time signals which are periodic in nature. So the Fourier series coefficients are basically they are complex numbers, and uh, complex numbers means the magnitude is a even even spectrum, even spectrum, and the phase angle is odd spectrum, and they are different only for the values of n from Minus n to plus n to the and n is nothing but integers. Integers means they have the only only different for integers. So it's a discrete waveform we are going to get and it is a aperiodic in nature. And the Fourier series Fourier transform is applicable to continuous time signals which are aperiodic in nature. And here f of t means the Fourier transform is f of omega. So omega value is lying from minus n to plus n to the and omega is a real value means it can take any value. So if it take, takes any value, so then we are going to get the continuous waveform we are going to get and uh, here at the uh, Magnitude is even spectrum and the phase angle is odd spectrum, but the, there is nothing like a periodic. It is a periodic in nature. Similarly, discrete time Fourier series is applicable to discrete time signals which are periodic in nature. And here, see Fourier series means Fourier series coefficients. Fourier series coefficients means we are going to get the value of n from minus one to plus one to the n is nothing but integers. So the graph we are going to get is discrete. And remember, this is a periodic. And this is a periodic graph. Similarly, discrete time Fourier transform is applicable to Discrete time signals which are aperiodic in nature. Discrete time is uh, you know the four transforms I have already told you the value of omega is lying from minus one to plus one to and omega is a real value. So therefore, the graph you are going to get is a continuous graph with the that that you are going to get because omega is a real value and it is a periodic. So these two things you have to remember and remember them how how the things are going to get. I explain. So these things always you have to keep in your mind. So now the next thing is. Continuous time Fourier transform and discrete time Fourier series are both of each other. Continuous time Fourier series are both of each other. Continuous time Fourier series are both of each other. Continuous time Fourier series are both of each other. Continuous time Fourier series are both of each other. Continuous time Fourier series are both of each other. Contin
Fourier transform. So, continuous term Fourier transform and the scalar Fourier series. These are dual of each other. Why it is like this? So, continuous term Fourier transform and the scalar Fourier series are dual of each other. So, how, why it is like this? We say continuous term and periodic. Discrete and periodic. Continuous term and periodic. Discrete and periodic. So, continuous term Fourier transform and discrete term Fourier series are duals of each other. So, duals of each other. Why it is like this? Simple opposite. Here, continuous term and periodic. Here, continuous means we are discrete. Here, periodic means we are periodic. Here, continuous means we are discrete. Here, periodic means we are periodic. Continuous term Fourier series and discrete term Fourier transform are duals of each other. So, continuous term Fourier series and discrete term Fourier transform are duals of each other means here continuous term and periodic. Here continuous means here discrete. Here periodic means are periodic. Here discrete means here continuous. Here periodic means here periodic. So, opposite, opposite. So, therefore, we can say these two are duals of each other. So, which are duals of each other? CDFT, CDFT and DDFS. So, these two. Continuous time Fourier transform and discrete time Fourier series. So, continuous time Fourier transform and discrete time Fourier series. So, these two are duals. So, these two are duals of each other. Then, then, this last two are also duals of each other. This last two and last two. These are also duals. So, first one and last one, second one and third one are duals of each other. So, here, yeah, continuous means are discrete. Here, periodic means are periodic. Here, continuous means are discrete. Here, periodic means are periodic. So, these are duals of each other. Here, continuous means are discrete. Here, periodic means are periodic. The discrete means are continuous. The ability means are periodic. You can see. So these two are duals of each other. And these two also duals of each other. Because both are complement of each other. So that is a thing here. These two are dual. And these two are also dual. So continuous term for each. Continuous term for each function. And discrete term for each series are duals of each other. And continuous term for each series. And discrete term for each transform are also duals of each other. I have already shown you in the graph also. Next thing here. For DC signal, we consider its frequency as zero. See, for DC signal, we are going to consider its frequency as zero by default because DC signal will have no zero frequency because standard is infinity. Standard is infinity means frequency will become zero. So, for DC signal, we are going to consider its frequency as zero because frequency is nothing but one by time period. Standard is going to get infinity. So, we have to assume that the signal is going to repeat after T is equal to infinity. So, therefore, if t is equal to input, f is equal to 0. So, therefore, for a DC signal, its frequency is equal to 0 because frequency is equal to 1 by time period. So, we are going to assume the signal is going to repeat after t is equal to infinity. So, the first t is equal to infinity, frequency is equal to 0. So, therefore, for DC signal, the, its frequency is equal to 0. So, now, this is an input state. I have already told you, delta t is of t is equal to sigma, k is equal to minus m t plus m t, delta of t minus k t s. This is an input state. It is impossible to get ideally. Ideally, it is impossible to get this impulse strain. So, this is the impulse strain, right? Ideally, it is possible. But practically, it is not possible. Practically, it is impossible. Impossible to get practically. So, instead, we use pulse of train per sampling. So, instead of that, what we are going to do? We are going to use the pulse of train per sampling. This is a ideal case. Ideal case is not possible. But instead of that, we are going to take a small pulses. Small pulses we are going to consider. So this is the ideal impulse. Ideal impulse we cannot we cannot get it. So instead of that, we go for the rectangular pulses. Like this, like a pulse of train, we are going to consider. So this is the pulse of train. Practically, we are going to consider this, but ideally. So with the help of ideal only, we have learned the concept, right? But practically we are going to use this pulse, pulse train. So instead, so instead we use the pulse of train for sampling. So this is the pulse we are going to choose practically, but ideally we are going to use this one. So ideally. This input strain is impossible. So instead of that, we go for the pulse of train. We discussed only low based band signals, mean signals as by limited frequency in the frequency domain. So we discussed only low based band signals, mean signals as a band limited frequency in the frequency domain. So what we have learned, all of the concepts that we have learned, only for those signals which has the uh, like like this, like these things only. This is a uh, with respect to omega, so this is omega m and this is the minus omega o, omega m. So this is a thing that we have discussed, but not the like you can say 
I only have to sort them with it only the frequencies there after that designed to zero altitude. I want to only these things band into frequency only we have discussed from zero. So we discuss only low base band signals means these signals are having a frequency from zero to omega m. Only this range of frequencies we have discussed, not above this one. There may be signals like this also. So there may be signals like this. So like this also, they will be a present. So like this one, like this one, like this one, something will be there. But these things we have not discussed. We, we have not discussed. We have only discussed the low base band signals. Means the signal is having the frequency. The signal is defined only from 0 to omega m. But after that, it is not defined. So we discussed only low base band signals. Means signal has the band into thickness in it. Now we are going to discuss some important points in the signal and systems in a very, very detailed manner. The first point is any signal having steps alone in it can be completely defined as a sum of the number of delayed U of T with the suitable coefficients. Now the delay of the U of T indicates the instant where a step is to occur and the coefficient represents the amount of step size required at, in, at the delay given to U of T. So basically here we are saying that any signal having steps alone in it can be completely defined as a sum of the number of delayed U of T with suitable coefficients. Now the delay of the U of T indicates the instant where a step is to occur and the coefficient represents the amount of step size required at the delay given to U of T. So what is the meaning of this one? Suppose there is some signal, it is only with the steps, only with the steps. So the signal is basically is having only steps in it. So how you are going to represent? So this uh, signal we are going to represent only with the, with the help of delay U of T with the suitable coefficients. So where the delay of the U of T indicates the, the instant where a step is to occur and the question is going to represent the amount of step size required at the delay given to U of T. So basically in this point they are saying that suppose there is some signal. The signal is having only steps in it. Then we are going to represent with the, with the, the help of the concept U of T. So wherever the delay, there you have to use the U of T. And the question is, suppose there is a rise means you have to go for positive. If there is, the, if there is a uh, falling down means you have to go for the negative. So rising means, the signal is rising means, sudden rise means, or take the positive. If sudden decrease means take the negative. So this point always you have to keep in mind. Suppose let me use for example, so that you can easily able to understand. So let me give a small example in order to understand this concept. Suppose there is some signal in this fashion. So this is a signal. So uh, this is a, some signal which is present here. So let me draw the graph. Small example, not a very big example. I will give you the concept. So this is a signal which is there. So this is a signal. So this is the signal which is there. So how we are going to represent? So this is 2, this is 0 and this is 5. How we are going to represent? Very simple. So the signal how we are going to represent. So if you see, the signal is nothing but designing on the steps. So f of t, how we are going to represent? So here there is a sudden rise from 0 to 5 is sudden rise. Here which is u of t, right? So this is u of t. It is raised by plus 5. And here there is a step which is going to occur u of t minus 2. So here there is a sudden decay, decay by 5. Decay is so sudden decay minus minus. So the up means positive. So this is a way that we can write. So we, here there is a step to occur, there also there is a step to occur. Then u of t and then u of t minus 2 with sudden rise plus plus 5. Then sudden decay means minus 5. This decayed by minus 5. It is increased by plus 5. So this is a way you have to keep in your mind. So therefore, any signal which is having the steps alone in it can be completely defined as the sum of, sum of the number of d u of t with its double coefficients. Where the delay of the U of T indicates that instant where a step is to occur and the coefficient represents the amount of step size required at the delay given to U of T. So you can see basically the signal F of T is having only steps. So that is the reason we are going to represent the delay of U of T. Here U of T, here U of T minus 2. Here it is increased by plus 5. Here it is decreased by minus 5. Here it is means positive, decrease means negative. So these points always you have to keep in your mind. So finally I can say that any signal which is steps alone in it can be completely defined as the sum of the number of delayed u of t with suitable coefficients where the delay of the u of t indicates the instant where a step is to occur 
and the position reduction the amount of step size required and the delay given to the u of t the next point is any signal made up of straight lines alone can be can be completely different as the sum of the number of delay and r of t with suitable coefficients the delay of the r of t indicates the instant of the time and the coefficient indicates the amount of change in slope required and the delay given to r of t so listen carefully any signal made of straight lines alone can be completely defined as the as the uh, sum of the as sum of the number of delayed r of t with suitable coefficients where the delay of r of t indicates the instant of time and the coefficient indicates the amount of change in slope required at the delay uh, given to r of t so what is the meaning of this one so what is the meaning of this one the meaning is very simple what is the meaning of this one the meaning is very simple so here suppose a signal is there it is having only straight lines it is having only straight lines then how we are going to represent then we are going to represent only with the help of the r of t r of t is the gram uh, signal so wherever there is a delay there you have to use this instant and the coefficient is nothing but slope of the graph slope of the line so the the slope is nothing but here the coefficient is nothing but it is a change in the uh, amount of slope so any signal made of straight lines alone can be completely different as the sum of the number of the delayed r of t with its double coefficients where the delay of r of t indicates the instant of time and the coefficient indicates the amount of change in slope so what are this coefficient is going to tell you is the amount of change in slope required at the delay given to r of t so i am going to explain this concept with a small example so let me draw a small example a small example only not a very big example i will give only a very small example suppose it is a signal f of t so this is a signal f of t so now let me go it is represented by only straight lines is are you on the straight lines so like this it is there so like this it is there so you have two straight lines so here let me assume this is a 2 and this is a 5 so what is uh, how we are going to represent let me do the expression so you can see f of t so this is a first line and this is a second line so this is a first line and this is a second line so what is the slope of the first line 5 by 2 minus is by x axis slope of the first line is 5 by 2 so here let me write here Here the slope is five by two. So, so what is the slope of the straight line? The straight line slope is zero. So here, how much slope that we need to add? Here, how much slope we need to add? We need to add it is for five by two. We have to add minus five by two. Then only it will become zero. So for 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 five by two, if we add minus five by two, then only it is going to become zero. But here, how much? Here the slope is zero. Here the slope is zero. So here, how much we have to add? Five by two. So. So for this zero slope, so this is zero slope. It's a five by two slope, and this is zero slope. So at this instant, we have to add five by two to zero in order to get the five by two. Similarly, here we have to add minus five by two to five by two in order to make it zero. So how we are going to represent the four phase at the end? Here, yeah. what is the slope here? Five by two. Five by two into t into uh, t into u of t. Okay. Here I can write like this. Basically, I can write like this. So basically, f of t is nothing but coefficient. What is the coefficient here? The coefficient is equal to five by two into p into u of t. Here, how much is the slope that we need to add? Minus five by two. So minus five by two. Here, r of t minus two. So basically, what is r of t? R of t is equal to p into u of t. So here, instead of these things, we can write this is r of t. We can write this is r of t. So finally, let me write here: five by two plus five by two into r of t minus five by two into r of t minus two. So this is the work that we are going to get here. Suppose if we have small dot, you can check. Suppose if p is equal to five, what is the value? We can get. We can just see here: five by two r of five minus five by two into r of five minus two is equal to three. So r of three is equal to three into r of two is equal to three. So minus five by two into Three. Right. Now is equal to four by two. R of five. R of five is nothing but five. So you simplify. Four by two is common. Four minus three is nothing but two. So five by two into two is nothing but three cancels. We are going to get five. It's only five you are going to get. Same thing now. At three is equal to five. It's only is equal to five. So therefore, here what I can say. So basically here we have three straight lines. So this is the first straight line, second straight line, and third straight line. 
So this line has a slope zero. This slope, this line has a slope of four, four, at five by two, and this uh, line has a slope of zero. So here for zero we have to add five by two in order to get five by two. Here for five by two we have to add minus five by two in order to get zero. So here there is a ramp signal. Here there is a ramp signal. Its slope is plus five by two. So plus five by two into R of t. Here there is another. There, there is another. Ramp signal slope is minus five by two, so minus five by two into R of here it is divided by two units, so R of t minus two. So like this you have to write R of t is nothing but t into U of t. So what are this function is nothing but it is a change in slope, final value minus initial value, five by two minus zero, this five by two, zero minus five by two, this minus five by two. Either you can think like that, or how much amount of slope we need to add to the previous signal to now to get the next signal slope. So How much amount of slope that we need to add to this pre the previous one in order to get the new one? Like that also you can see or change in slope zero minus five by two is equal to minus five by two five by two minus zero is equal to plus five by two. Or what amount of slope that we need to add to the previous signal in order to get the next signal slope? Like that also we can think any of the concept is same. So therefore we can say any signal which is made up of straight lines alone can be completely defined as the sum of the number of the delayed R of T. With the suitable positions, where the delay of the R of T indicates the instant of time, and the position indicates the amount of change in slope required at the delay, which is equal to R of T. So finally, I can say any signal which is made up of straight lines alone can be can be completely defined as the sum of the number of delayed R of T. With the suitable positions, where the delay of R of T indicates the instant of time, and the position indicates the amount of change in slope required at the delay, given to R of T. So these two things always you have to keep in your mind. So yeah, let me conclude. If if any signal is meeting of only steps means you can do with the help of U of T. If any if a signal is only with the help of straight lines means that we can represent with the help of ramp signals. So this is what I am trying to tell you. The next point is signals having steps alone in them when it is defined in terms of U of T. The sum of coefficients will be zero only when the signal has finite duration. But this is, however, not true for signals made of straight lines even in terms of R of t. So, what is the meaning of this one? Signals having steps alone in them, when it is defined in terms of U of t, the sum of coefficients will be zero only when the signal has finite duration. But this is, however, not true for signals made of straight lines defined in terms of R of t. So, what is the meaning of this one? Suppose Here, let me give a small example. Suppose the signal f of t is made only of steps, so it is a finite signal because the signal is present only for finite duration. Then, this is expression that right? so try to add all the coefficients here plus five and minus five. So if we add these two coefficients, we got x value is equal to zero. But in this case, this is an infinite signal. This is an infinite signal, right? Suppose if we take a finite signal, if we take a finite signal here also, we take a finite signal. And you add all the coefficients. There, this uh, summation will be not equal to zero. So, what I am trying to tell you is very simple. Suppose if you take a, a, sig a signal in terms of steps, and it's a finite step signal, and if you add all the coefficients, its value will be equal to zero. But this is not true in the case of the ramp. Suppose if you take a ramp signal, if you take a ramp signal, it's a finite signal. If you take a ramp signal of finite, finite duration. Then what you will do? Then what you will do? You will add all the coefficients. Then the summation will be not equal to zero. But if you see this is an infinite signal, right? It is present for all the time. But if you add those coefficients, its value is zero. So therefore, we can say that this is not always true. This is not always true, but it is always true. So what I am trying to tell you is simple. Signal having steps alone in them, where it is defined in terms of zero, the sum of coefficients will be zero only when the signal has finite duration. But this is however not true for signals. Made of straight lines, defined in terms of R of t. So finally, I can say, suppose signal f of t just just made up of only steps, and is having only finite duration. Then in that case, the sum of the coefficients is always equal to zero. Suppose if a signal is made up of straight lines, it is made up of straight lines. If it is made up of straight lines, if it is having only finite duration, the summation of all these coefficients will be not equal to zero. So these points I am trying to tell you. So signals having steps alone in them, when it is defined in terms of U of t, the sum of coefficients will be zero only when the signal has finite finite duration. 
but this is obvious not true for signals negative straight lines just differ in terms of power of tail so this point always you have to keep in your mind so now the next point is so what is the next point here for any signal for any general signal f of t always f of t plus f of minus t is always an even signal and f of t minus f of minus t is always an odd signal so i have already told you one important point i have already told you one important point but let me repeat that point here see i have already told you to take any signal to take any signal that i can represent in summation of the even signal plus odd signal so here i have already told you to take any signal f of t i can represent in summation of the even signal as well as the odd signal so if you figure out the if you want to figure out the even signal f of t is nothing but f of t plus f of minus t by 2 then odd signal f of t is nothing but if you want to represent it is f of t minus f of minus t by 2 so in this way we can figure out the even part as well as the odd part for a given signal f of t suppose if this is the even part then this is also even part right so f of t plus f of minus t is also even signal if this is a even signal this is also even signal if this is a odd signal then definitely f of t minus f of minus t is also odd signal because we are doing only a scaling factor right so therefore we can say f of t plus f of minus t is always an even signal and f of t minus f of minus t is always an odd signal yeah this thing is we are multiplying by factor 1 by 2 1 by 2 so if this is a even signal then this is also even signal. If this is our signal, then this is also our signal because we just feel being some scaling factor. So therefore, we can say for any general signal f of t, always f of t plus f of minus t is always an even signal, and f of t minus f of minus t is an our signal. As you already told this important point. The next point is for complex even signal or even conjugate signal, always real part is even and imaginary part is odd. So, for complex even signal or even conjugate signal, always real part is even and imaginary part is odd. So, this one I have already told you so many number of times. So, for complex even signal or even conjugate signal, always a real part is even and the imaginary part is odd. So, this one also I have already told you so many number of times. So, for complex even signal or even conjugate signal, always the real part is even and the imaginary part is odd in nature. So this is already told you. So basically, suppose if you take a complex signal, suppose if you take a complex signal f of t, how we can represent this nothing but even conjugate signal plus odd conjugate signal, odd conjugate signal. So how to figure out the even conjugate signal? It is nothing but f of t plus f of minus t whole conjugate by 2. Similarly, odd conjugate signal is nothing but we are going to be f of t minus f of minus t whole conjugate by t. I have already told this point right. So, here only thing is it is f of minus t by f conjugate of minus t. I have already told this is a real signal and this is a complex signal. So, any complex signal we can represent as a much of the even conjugate signal as well as a odd conjugate signal. Even conjugate signal is nothing but f of t plus f of minus t conjugate by 2. And our conjugate signal is nothing but f of t minus f of minus t conjugate by 2. So, this point always you have to keep in your mind. So, we say uh, for complex even signal or even conjugate signal, always the real part is even and imaginary part is odd. So, if you try to figure out, it is basically a complex number, right? It is basically a complex number. It is a, it's a complex number. So, for this one, the real part. So, here let me write this is a real part and this is the imaginary part. So the real part is always, real part is always even in nature and the imaginary part is always odd in nature. So because it is a complex signal, right? so we know the complex thing. So the real part is always even, even in nature and the imaginary part is odd in nature. Similarly, this is also a so this is also a complex signal, right? So for odd conjugate signal or complex or odd signal, always the real part is odd, here the real, real part is Order and the imaginary part is even, vice versa, vice versa. So, this point always you have to keep in mind. So, therefore, we can say that the model told me this is for the real signal, the f of t is the real signal. Real signal means there is no imaginary part. 
the here f of t is the real signal real signal but here f of t is the public signal so here the f of t is the complex signal so this part always you have to put in the mark so in the previous case f of t is the real signal and here f of t is a public signal so f of t is equal to even conjugate signal plus odd conjugate signal even conjugate signal is nothing but f of t plus f of minus t conjugate by 2 and odd conjugate signal is nothing but f of t minus f of minus t conjugate by 2 because it is a complex signal so it will have the imaginary part and real part as well as the imaginary part a plus ib and a plus ib so here even means the real part is even and the imaginary part is odd the odd means the, the real part is odd and the imaginary part is even so here even means the real part is even so odd will be yeah, the imaginary part is opposite odd here it is odd means the real part is odd and the imaginary part is even so therefore we can say for complex even signal or even conjugate signal always the real part is even and the imaginary part is odd and for the odd conjugate signal or the complex or signal always the real part is odd and the imaginary part is even so whatever this nature same thing will be for the real part whatever this nature same will be for the real part also and the imaginary part will be opposite of this nature opposite of this nature so therefore we can say that for complex even signal or even conjugate signal the real part is always even and the imaginary part is odd and for odd conjugate signal or complex or signal always the real part is odd and the imaginary part is even so these points always you have to keep in mind so now for foc or n this odd conjugate signal sample at n is equal to zero is purely imaginary and the real part is odd and the imaginary part is even so listen carefully what is the meaning of this one for the odd conjugate signal sample at n is equal to zero is purely imaginary and the real part is odd and the imaginary part is even so what is the meaning of this one let me explain suppose see f o c of f o c of n so f o c of n is nothing but same thing with this script i am doing f of n minus f conjugate of minus n by 2 by 2 right so now at n is equal to 0 at n is equal to 0 means f of g at 0 is equal to f of 0 minus f of minus 0 f of minus 0 is equal to 0 all conjugate by 2 all conjugate by 2 so now what is going to happen so f of f of minus 0 is equal to 0 f of minus 0 is equal to 0 so sample at n is equal to 0 is purely imaginary suppose suppose what i can say suppose f of 0 suppose f of 0 is a plus ib suppose assume like this then what is f conjugate of 0 it is nothing but a minus ib so do the subtraction of these two things what you are going to get a plus ib minus a plus ib by p so plus ib minus ib cancel sorry plus a minus a cancels we are going to get 2 ib by p which is equal to ib you are going to get then what what we can say that the uh, it is a purely imaginary so purely imaginary so real part is 0 so 0 plus ib so that's what we can say the sample rate is equal to 0 is purely imaginary and the real part is odd and the imaginary part is even i have already told you the real part is always odd and the imaginary part is even so therefore we can say as you can say for odd conjugate signal the real part is always odd and the imaginary part is even at the n is equal to 0 what is the value you are going to get purely imaginary so as you can see clearly i have explained here also so for foc of n sample at n is equal to 0 is purely imaginary and the real part and the real part is always odd and the imaginary part is always even so this point always you have to keep in your mind so therefore we can say the foc of n at the sample or of foc of n the sample at n is equal to 0 is purely imaginary and the real part is always odd and the imaginary part is always even as you can see clearly here similarly similarly for even signal you will go so let me do the analysis here so let me do the analysis here so if we see of of n of n means here it will become f of n plus f dash of minus n by 2 2 right so what i will do here i will try to find what is the sample at n is equal to 0 so f of 0 is something but f of 0 plus f conjugate of minus 0 is something but 0 only right now we have already told it was in f of 0 is equal to a plus ib 
then f conjugate of 0 is nothing but a minus ib so with the addition of these two things with the addition we are going to get ib ib cancels we are going to get 2a by 2 which is nothing but a is a purely real is a purely real is a purely real so it is a purely real we can say then what is our real part or even conjugate the real part is even and the major part is odd so therefore for a pc of n the sum of n is purely real and the real part is even and the major part is odd so therefore we can say for a pc of n sample of n is purely real and the real part is even and the major part is odd similarly for a pc of n the sample of n is purely imaginary and the real part is odd and the imaginary part is even so finally i can say for a pc of n the sample of n is purely real and the real part is even and the imaginary part is odd for a pc of n the sample of n is purely imaginary and the real part is R, and the imaginary part is even. So these things sometimes you have to keep in your mind. So you can see this point I have explained, and this point also I have explained. Now let's go for the another part, which is if f of t is equal to f of t plus f two of t up to f of t. So the signal is summation of all the signals. Each signal will be always periodic, but there some may or may not be periodic. So I already told you. Suppose I am going to assume all the signals, f1 of t, f2 of t, f3 of, of t, all these are periodic signals. I have assumed. If I add all the signals, there is a signal, it may be period or it may not be period. So this one always you have to keep in mind. Suppose what I am trying to use very simple. See, f1 of t, f2 of t, f3 of, of t, all the signals I have assumed, all these are periodic signals. Compulsory, I have assumed all these are periodic signals. Then if we add all the signals, the resistance signal f of t, it may be period or it may not be period. So, E signal will be always periodic, but there, some may or do not be periodic. I have already told you. See, suppose f1 of t, f2 of t, f3 of, of t, I have already taken all the signals are compulsory periodic signals only I have taken. If I do the addition of this, all the signals, additional subtraction of all the signals, the resistance signal, it may be period or it may not be period. So, this concept I have already told So, what is the condition for periodic? So do the uh, do the this way, omega two by omega one, omega three by omega two, up to omega omega n by omega n minus one, and then omega one by omega n. Do this ratio, and if you are going to the initial number, then definitely we can say f of t. If all the signals, if all this ratio is a, if all this ratio is a initial number, then f of t is a periodic signal. Suppose if at least if any one of this is a non-initial number then definitely f of t is a not periodic signal so listen carefully omega 2 by omega 1 omega 3 by omega 2 omega n by omega n minus 1 and omega 1 by omega n if all these are rational numbers then only f of t is periodic if at least one of them is not a rational number then f of t is not a periodic signal these things i have already told you so many number of times so these things always you have to keep in your mind so now the next point is Suppose f of n is equal to f1 of m plus f2 of m plus f2 f1 of m. If a signal is periodic and compulsory, the summation is also periodic. So, suppose this is a discrete term. Suppose f of t is a summation of the f1 of m, f2 of m, f1 of m. Suppose I have taken f1 of m as a periodic signal, f2 of m is a periodic signal, f2 of m, of m. All the signals are periodic signal. If I do the addition, I will have a combination of these signals. Then the resonance signal is always compulsory periodic. So, what I am trying to tell you in a basically time domain. In time domain, if the signals are periodic, if you do the linear combination of these signals, the resonance signal may be periodic or it may be, it may not be periodic. But in this time domain, if you take all the signals are periodic and if you do the linear combination of those signals, then the resonance signal is always periodic. So, this point always you have to keep in your mind. So, therefore, we can say in the time domain, in the time domain, if you take all the signals are periodic and if you do the linear combination, then the resonance signal may be periodic or it may not be periodic. But in the discrete time domain, if you take all the signals are periodic and if you do the linear combination of these signals, then the resonance signal is always periodic. So, this point always you have to keep in your mind. The next point is the summation of two continuous time periodic signals may or may not be periodic, but summation of two discrete time periodic signals is always periodic. So, this is what I have done the statement. The sum of two continuous, continuous time periodic signals may or may not be periodic, but sum of two discrete time periodic signals is always periodic. 
So this is the same thing which I have, which I have told you just now. So if you do the summation of two continuous time periodic signals, then the resultant signal may be periodic or it may, may not be periodic. But if you do the summation of two discrete time periodic signals, then the resultant signal is always periodic. So this is the point always you have to keep in mind. So finally, I can say, if you do the summation of two continuous time periodic signals, then the resultant signal, it may be periodic or it may not be periodic. But if you do the summation of two discrete time periodic signals, the resultant is always a periodic signal. So finally, I can say, uh, if you do the summation of two continuous time periodic signals, the resultant signal may or may not be periodic, but the summation of two discrete time periodic signals is always a periodic. So, what are the cause of the theorem? This is a general statement regarding this one. So, now, here, let's go for the another thing. Suppose, what is the meaning of energy signal? Energy signal means, energy signal means, if the signal has a finite energy and a zero power, that is called as the energy signal. What is the meaning of energy signal? If a signal is having a finite energy or a zero power, that is called as an energy signal. So, example is, finite duration signal or infinite duration signal but as t tends to infinity its value should tend to zero so here yeah, yeah, these are the two things which can happen see finite time duration finite time duration signal finite time duration signal or infinite time duration signal but as t tends to infinity f of t value should tend to zero so finite time duration signal finite time duration signal or infinite time duration signal but as it is to infinity the story should tend to zero see all finite time duration signals are energy signals and all infinite time duration signal but as t tends to infinity the story should tend to zero then these signals are considered as the energy signals because there the energy will be finite but the power is equal to zero because what is the meaning of power power is equal to energy by time energy is a finite value but time is taken from minus m to plus infinity so, finite by infinity is nothing but zero. So, therefore, we can say finally, a signal is said to be energy signal where it has a finite amount of energy and zero amount of power. The signals are the, the signals are those signals which have finite time duration signal and those signals which have infinite time, infinite time duration, but still, as it is to the default value should tend to zero. Then, these signals are called as the finite or energy, energy signals we can call. So now, what is the meaning of power signal? Power signal is, power signal means these are the signals which have infinite energy but finite power. Power signal means these are the signals which have infinite energy but finite value of power. Then this is called as a power signal. So what are those examples which have infinite duration signals and periodic signal? So all the periodic signals are called as a power signal. And what are you doing? All the periodic signals are the power signals. All the periodic signals are the power signals because for periodic signals, it has an infinite time duration, but the value is going to ask them within a certain value of time, or about the certain limits. As t tends to infinity, f of t should tend to non-zero. So as t tends to infinity, f of t tends to non-zero. Because you can see in the periodic signals, definitely you can see f of t tends to non-zero at t tends to infinity. So what is the meaning of power signal? Power signal is nothing but those signals which have infinite energy, but a finite value of power. So, basically, power is the more energy by time. Energy is infinite, time is also infinite from minus m to, 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 to plus m to t. So, infinite by infinity is nothing but finite value. So, therefore, the, the signals which have infinite energy but finite power, those are called as a power signal. So, what are the best example? Which is all periodic signals. All periodic signals are called as the power signals. Because at t tends to infinity, those values will never tend to zero. So as it has to infinity, those value f of t value will never tend to zero means it will be non-zero in nature. So the next point is what is the meaning of neither energy signal nor power signal? Means both are infinite. If energy is equal to infinity and power is equal to infinity, then we can say those signals are called as the neither energy signal nor power signal. So if A is equal to infinity and P is equal to infinity, those signals are called as the neither energy signal not power signal or the, what is the best example as t tends to infinity f of t value is also tending to infinity so the best example is here let me draw this graph so you can see clearly so this is the best example graph so you can see as t tends to infinity the value f of t tends to infinity so those signals are called as the 
signals are basically called as a neither energy signal nor power signal. So finally, I can say that power signal of energy signal, energy signal means these are the signals which have finite energy but zero power. The best example are the, the signals which have finite time duration signal or infrared time duration signal but as the of the empty, those value should tend to zero. Power signal means these are the signals which have infinite energy but current value of power. The best example is all the periodic signals are the power signals. See, for the for the periodic signals, as it has to infinity, f of t value will be it tends to non-zero means a finite value. Finite value we can say finite value. Similarly, neither energy nor power signals p is equal to infinity as p is equal to infinity, then we can say these signals are neither energy signal nor power signal. The best example is as it tends to infinity, f of t value is also tends to infinity. As you can see, clearly this is one of the best examples. The energy is called input as the power is also equal to input. So we can say these are neither the energy signal nor the power signal. The energy is equal to finite, so this follows the energy signal. The power is equal to finite, so this follows the energy signal. They both are not finite, so it is not energy signal, not points, finite, or power signal. The energy is equal to finite value. To show that this is the result, the energy signal. The power is equal to finite value, so because of this reason, it is called power signal. They are both are not finite, so that is the reason. These are not the energy signal nor the power signal. So this point always you have to keep in your mind. So finally, I can say a signal is said to be energy signal when it has finite value of energy but zero power. The best example is the signals which have finite time duration signal or those signals which have infinite time duration signal, but as t tends to infinity, those values should tend to zero. Power signal means those are the signals which have infinite value of energy but the finite value of power. The best example is those signals which have infinite time duration or we can say all the periodic signals are called as power signals. And for this for this periodic signals, as it has to the f of t value should tends to non-zero value of finite value. And if the signals which are called as the neither energy signal or power signal means energy is equal to infinity and power is equal to infinity. Those signals which have energy is equal to infinity and power is equal to infinity. Those signals are called as a neither energy signal or power signal. And the next example is as it tends to infinity, the f of t value tends to infinity. So therefore we can say as it tends to infinity, f of t tends to infinity. So here energy is called infinity and power is also infinity. So therefore we can say these are not the energy signal nor the power signal. So this would always you have to keep in your mind. So now let's go for the another point, which is the time shifting and time reversal will not affect the energy of the original signal. But only time scaling will affect the energy. So listen very carefully. So listen carefully. What are the effects of the energy? See, suppose time shifting. Time shifting means we can say f of t uh, plus or minus t naught. So listen carefully. Suppose f of t is there. Suppose for f of t, for f of t the energy is e. Then f of t plus or minus t naught means just we are shifting the signal. Just we are shifting the signal. Either left side or right side. So still the energy is same as it is. Time shifting and time reversal. So what is the meaning of time reversal? F of minus t. For this also the energy is same as it is. As it is, it will be, there. It will be no change. The time shifting and the time reversal will not affect the energy of the original signal, but only the time scaling. Time scaling. Time scaling. This time scaling is going to affect the energy. I think the formula is E by A. But let me cross the later. As per my view, it should be E by A. E by A. Let me cross it to the body. Let me cross it later. But up to now, take this as the case. Okay? You can see clearly, yeah, see, time shifting and time reversal will not going to affect the energy of the signal. But only time scaling is going to affect the energy of the signal. So this is a very, very important thing. Always you have to keep in your mind. So time shifting and time reversal will not affect the energy of the signal, only the time scaling is going to affect the, it is going to affect the energy of the signal. But in my opinion, the answer is E by mod A. But let me cross it, because here, here if suppose A is greater than, means we are compressing the signal. If you are going to compress the signal, means energy is going to get decreased. Suppose if you are going to expand the signal, means A is less than 1, then definitely if you are going to expand the signal, means the energy is also going to get increased. So this is what I am trying to tell you. So finally, I can say time shifting and time reversal will not have any effect in the energy of the signal, but only the time scaling is going to affect the 
energy which is going to present in the signal. So finally I can say time shifting and time reversal will not affect the energy of the signal but only the time scaling is going to affect the energy of the signal. So this point always you have to keep in your mind. So time shifting and time reversal is not going to affect the energy of the signal but only the time scaling is going to affect the energy of the signal. So finally time shifting and time reversal is not going to affect the energy of the signal but only the time scaling is going to affect the energy of the signal. So if f of t is having energy e, then f of t plus or minus t naught will have the same energy e, and f of minus t will have the same energy e, but f of et will have the energy e by mod So this is the answer as for my uh, previous knowledge. But let me cross check later, but until now, remember this is the case here. E is greater than means here time compressing. Time compressing means energy is going to be decreased. Yeah, it is the moment.